another show. My goodness, this one. Uh, stop the show. Stop it. Stop it. I, I, I am not. I am not proud of. Um, because we're gonna be talking about the Godfather of the Red Pill. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And and some of y'all be like, well, Duke. I mean, the Godfather of the Red Pill. I mean, isn't that a big deal? Because you know, it, it's 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 the guy, right? He he he's the one that started this whole thing. Shouldn't shouldn't we see, this be something that should be at least interesting of a news? Since you're deciding to talk about it, well, yeah, yes. The reason why I don't want to talk about it because it's Rolo Tomasi, and you all know how Rolo Tomasi is. It's just he, this guy just whines. He's just a, just a whiner, bro. Give somebody find him some cheese so you can have it with that wine. Because he just whines so freaking much okay he's either whining about women and marriages over here or he, he's whining about something else and one thing that rollo loves to whine about guys especially if you're not familiar with them is other people who are doing better than Rolo tomasi you see listen it, it's one thing to be the godfather of the red pill it's another thing to be the godfather of the red pill and ain't nobody watching your shit <laughs> Like nobody gives a shit anymore, and your relevancy is slowly starting to decline. Matter of fact, all right, it's it's another thing entirely to to basically just hate on the people that are doing better than you, especially if you they came through your network, okay? Which I find just so crazy to me, because like everyone else who's still a Rolo fantard, they're out here just you know thinking this guy everything he says is gospel, and it's it's really like, bro, this, this guy's the real hater over here. <laughs> like you want to talk about sipping on the hater aid, bro? That is this guy over here. He is hating on people that are doing better than him, even though he's the one directly responsible for those people who are uh, 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 some of those people who are doing better than him right now. Not all of them that he hates on are the ones that came through Roll Tomasi or his BS network. Okay. The ones I'm specifically talking about are like, obviously the Myron Gaines of the world. And, and uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some people are like, yo, dope, dope. Wait a minute. Rolo's hating on Myron. Listen, yo. Okay, <laughs> listen and listen close because after this video, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I might be sensing some rift between the Fresh and Fit crew and Roll Tomasi, even though maybe it's not, uh, they're not, they're not going to make it public, obviously. But I definitely know, especially knowing how Rolo is, okay, I definitely know he has a problem because Fresh and, Fresh and Fit, all right, were recently fraternizing with someone that Rolo considers a ultimate grifter, someone that Rolo considers a red pill enemy. Me. So when that Rolo Tomasi considered the single-handed, most single-handedly most destructive person in the red pill movement, okay, and that is person is Pearl Davis, okay, or in this case Hannah Pearl Davis, yeah, that that one, yeah, the 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 one that doesn't know anything but argues for everything, her, <laughs> and honestly, it's no surprise because Rolo has been calling Pearl a grifter for quite some time which by, by the way we actually covered it in this video not in this video but in this in this channel right we covered when Rose started to talk shit because it was very surprising one thing we've seen is a bunch of you know pill popping weirdos and conservatives who have been flocking over to pearly things right and you know all she had to do was make the talking points and that was it she gets called the female andrew tate no work, <laughs> no no hard work necessary. I mean, he, at least Andrew Tate, he became a trafficker. Basically, he is risking his freedom for internet clout. And Pearl, I mean, she just comes in and repeats what he says and gets the clout. Absolutely not, right? So that's all. Roll Tomasi there. He's he 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 he. he He's getting mad right now, all right? He can't believe the good fortune that's coming through to even grifters like Pearl, right? Now, the reason why I say Fresh and Fit might be on the chopping block is because if you guys remember, Fresh and Fit, and we also covered that on the channel, did a live stream with Pearl Davis, okay? And one thing that Rilla pointed out is the fact that Pearl was kind of being fake to them, but all of a sudden now, Fresh and Fit are cooler? Like, what? That don't even make any sense. And honestly, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Roll Tomasi is feeling some kind of way about Fresh and Fit doing that collab with Pearl Davis, okay? He's feeling some type of way. And obviously, when Roll feels some type of way about some people, he, he feels as though, you know, doesn't deserve the clout that they have because he feels as though he should have the clout that they deserve 
right? Whenever he feels bad, he goes on his live stream and he cries about it, okay? And that's what he was doing on his most recent live stream. He was crying about it a little bit, right? And, and not only that, he was also kind of talking about a couple of other things too as well, which I find interesting. But we're, we're going to go into all of that because it, it seems as though Roel Tomasi is coming to the same conclusions that we have come through since predicting these motherfuckers this entire time, right? And that is the prediction that, listen, the red pill is a fucking joke. And, okay, it's becoming conservatism again. That That's what these guys are doing. They're turning my movement. They're making it all conservatives and Republicans. Like, look what they did to my boy. <laughs> they massacred my red pill baby. That's basically what this live stream was about. Him basically crying and complaining that a lot of these top tier red pill content creators, including Fush and Fit, seem to be dabbling into politics, more specifically right wing politics. Now, I am, uh, if you would excuse me, going to take this moment to go ahead and say, <clears throat> <laughs> I told you so. I told all of you so. Okay, maybe not you guys watching the channel. You guys are way far ahead of the game than anything else. Okay, so if, let me just let you all know this. Y'all watching this channel right here. Okay, you're already far ahead of the game. That even all of these red pill bo popping bozos out here. I can't even get the word out, right? You're far ahead in the game. The reason being is because, listen, we got the power. It's a super secret power, guys. You guys know what that power is? It's called hindsight 2020. <laughs> hindsight 2020 vision. And it seems like that combined with common sense allows us this uncanny ability to almost predict uh, Red Pillar's fate. <laughs> I mean, that's what it seems like to me. Because it seems like Rolo Tomasi is just now coming to the conclusion that a lot of these Red Pill guys who've been championing the banner for Red Pill movement this long are all grifting into conservatism now, right? Because it, it's political season. And it, it was it was it it enough to complain about that. It would have been enough, right? But then he also complains about how these guys, it's cyclical, okay? They're grifting is cyclical, okay? Because one minute they're they're they're, they're, they're chilling red pill talking points. And next minute, they're just trying to distance themselves away from it. They're using us. Okay? Why don't you red pill content creators understand that these people are using us for cloud? They're using all of our stuff. They don't even bring on the right people. Okay? I used to be on Dr. Phil. That, that That's Rollo's thing, by the way. Okay? It, it's Dr. Phil. He, he's actually going after Dr. Phil now. I know. Some of y'all might be asking, Duke, what? That don't even make any sense, really. <laughs> why is he? Why is Rolo going after Doctor Phil of all people? Well, it's because Rolo does this all the time. Yeah, he goes after people. Remember, I told you that not only people who came through Rolo's network, uh, he he hates on people that don't come through his network too, okay? People who are more popular than him, right? He's done the same thing with other content creators too as well, uh, like Jordan Peterson. You will never be Jordan Peterson Rolo, but you will see Rolo time after time again just hating on Jordan Peterson. Matt Walsh is another one, right? Matt Walsh is another one that Rolo deems a grifter because Matt Walsh gets invited to all of these shows. I think Matt Walsh has also been on Dr. Phil, right? But Matt Walsh get invited to all these shows, and hey, Candace Owens is another one, right? So he's hating on these guys because realistically, the conservative space is where Rolo wants to be. Right, he wants to be, be invited to all these interviews. Right, the interview that Pierce Morgan got with Pearl, he wanted to be Pearl. Okay, <laughs> he wished that was him. You'll hear him complain about all of this shit. Okay, and it's one of those things where I call this super hater raid. Okay, because I can't believe someone like this could hate so much. I mean, come on, dog. Like, if you want to get into politics that bad, get into politics. Okay, stop ha hating on these youngers who are seeing the Claire writing on the wall for your type of bullshit. Just saying, but that, that's the one thing Rolo gets, okay? He 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 understands that the red pill now <coughs> it's finally making a conservative talking point or turning point, I guess. Uh and, and he doesn't like it because now he feels it's time to call out the people who have been using his beloved platform or his beloved community to grift, okay? Now, now one thing that Rolo does is, is refer to himself when he used to go on Dr. Phil, which I find hilarious because he thinks that 
the reason why a lot of mainstream media are dealing with what he considers are the Ben's type of content creators when it comes to red pill and he includes pearl in the ben category now y'all might be asking too what the hell is a ben well ben is this guy that went on uh dr phil and basically he was like the ultimate incel okay and, and matter of fact we'll even watch a little bit of that clip because rose pissed at it at, at some point right so it's basically this ultimate insult guy that goes on Dr. Phil and talks about how hard it is to be a guy. And, you know, the, just the, the saddest, most pathetic dork you can ever find, right, to represent themselves. That's what the guy on the show was, right? And then Roll had a problem with it because he's saying, well, listen, Dr. Phil, if you're going to get any guests to come speak on behalf of Red Pill Points and incels, it should have been me. <laughs> I should have been on Dr. Phil again. Uh, why did they call me? Uh, Pierce Morgan, you're going to choose that bitch Pearl over me? I'm Rolo Tomasi. How dare you? I, they're all using my talking points. I need to get the invites to the shows, right? <laughs> like, no, that, that's that's literally Rolo's piss, point that got him so pissed off was the fact that he doesn't get invited to these mainstream media shows anymore. But all these other people like Pearl and all these other cats, they somehow do. Even Candace Owens, he has a problem with, which I have a problem with Candace Owens too, but not for the same reason that Toro Tomasi uh, does, right? I don't care how many shows Candace Owens appears on or how wrong she is on certain red pill points she's a fucking hypocrite and i think we should all just hate her for that okay because she knows that she's a hypocrite but she doesn't care but roll hates her because she gets to do interviews with all these people and clearly grift especially with the people he thought were closest to his heart fresh and fit <laughs> so that was very very interesting you best believe bro had a lot to say about that but but without further ado let's go ahead and get into this mess because it's Roll tomasi and it's a total yawn fest because this guy i mean it takes like five minutes for him to get to one point so, <laughs> so you gotta you really gotta endear on this one so so before we even do that we gotta cover the sponsorships of today's show okay that is the youtube like button button more specifically you guys you guys that make the show run i appreciate you being here so you guys can be anywhere in the world right now some of you guys are anywhere in the world right now with all different types of places and time zones i appreciate y'all being here because there are literally billions of content you could be watching but the fact that you spend time with duke the don that means a lot to me so please do not let your time be wasted just go ahead and sponsor the show. How to do that? Well, the easiest way to do that is to hit the like button and you're done. That's it. You've sponsored the show and we can keep things moving. But shout out to you guys. And let's get to this video because it's kind of hilarious, but also pathetic at the same time. Guys. It shows how good he is at building things, how good he is at uh, taking care of his body, and being strong enough to protect her and her children. This is the Ben it's guy. It's unfair that men care more about looks than women do. It's just how nature designs it. Wow. So you understand women. Yeah. How do you understand women so well? Oh, just life experience. I've put myself out there a lot and uh, had my fair share of learning. I've read a lot and experienced a lot of... You sound like he knows what he's talking about <laughs> from experience. Different perspectives and did my best to pull them all together. You're a sexual energy okay. coach. Did you catch yeah. that? Did you catch... Wait, I got to back that up just a touch. Oh. Okay. Real quick here. If you look at the chair that they put you in, they put me in these goddamn chairs too. And I was doing my best to keep my feet from not from. Notice how he keeps comparing himself to when he was on the show. Rolo, it's been a year. It's been multiple years. How long has it been? Like a couple of years since he's been on Dr. Phil. Okay. I doubt you're getting back on Dr. Phil. Rolo, I don't think you've noticed this yet. So allow our channel to help you out with this. Okay. It's a red pill news. So you might want to sit down for this one. You're no longer relevant as you think you are, bro. I'm just saying. You're no longer relevant nobody's looking for a 55 year old grandma to lecture him about fucking red pill points they'll rather find ben i mean ben seems suitable for that shit right but no one's calling you anymore rollo so i hope that's not a news flash but you need to take take it <laughs> i know it's tough a tough pill to swallow but it, it's a necessary pill angling off there but if you're about uh i don't know the average height like five nine or something like that notice like uh, uh, dr phil's a pretty tall dude he's probably pushing six feet maybe even maybe six one um when i met ben during this this whole thing um ben's probably you know five eight five nine something like that and so 
he dangles his feet off of there like he's like this manlet, right? I mean, he's like, this, <laughs> he's like he looks like a puppet or something, like a stuffed animal just like dangling his feet off there. It's like he's sitting at the kids' Bro, table. I'm doing I'm sure if Dr. Phil were to move his feet like literally an inch away from the ledge of that little uh, chair right there, his feet will be dangling too, okay? And Dr. Phil would also look like a manlet. I mean, they're both bald. They both wear glasses, all right? And they're both feet are dangling. So you trying to shame Ben in order to try to amplify your point doesn't make any sense to me, bro. It sounds like you hating because you wish you could be Ben right now. During Thanksgiving. What, help me with that. What is the sexual energy, Coach? So I help men with their mindsets, getting in touch with their masculinity, uh, figuring out their goals and what sorts of action steps they can take to make those goals real when it comes to dating and relationships. <laughs> Notice the, notice the expression on the faces. Of, but they don't they don't pan to the guys in the audience. They pan to the women in the audience. Uh -huh. But you don't have a girlfriend? Not at the moment, no. Okay. So you're telling other people how to get girlfriends and you don't have one. <laughs> well, I teach them how to get in touch with their masculinity. Okay. And so my clients have found girlfriends because of me. Okay. And how do you define masculinity? Uh, you know what's funny? Rolo is laughing at this guy, but uh, they all do this. All of these red pill poppers do this. They all live lives and give advices based off the lives they are not living. Okay. Let me make this clear. Okay. So get used to it because myron you sit there he'll try to give you relationship advice or or advice to be high value and get women flocking to you but these guys you look at their lifestyle they're on seeking arrangement and other sugar dating websites okay so they're trying to make you spend money on a course okay to teach you how to organically get women to like you but then they themselves are paying literally paying women on seeking arrangements to be around them. That's where they find most of their girls. So I'm not surprised this guy over here who's coaching incels online is making a bag off these incels and still single can, and can't find a woman, right? It makes sense to me because a lot of these guys who are internet coaches are complete hypocrites. I'm not playing with y'all, bro. So it doesn't, I don't know why Rolo is laughing. Rolo, nigga, you in the same boat. You're over here telling guys to have bisectomies and shit. And look at you. You're a happily married man or divorced man now. In his 50s, mid 50s, over here trying to teach young guys who are in the dating pool how to date. Bro, get the fuck out of here. All right. Back when you were dating, they probably didn't even have mobile cell phones working like the right way, bro. Yeah, bro. They probably had those uh, you know, those cell phones they put in the car. Y'all remember that? You know, you know, for a mobile cell phone back then, all right, around Rolo's time, you had to build that shit in your car. You know that? that that's probably from the era Rolo is trying to date girls who uh, who, who grew up with iPhone, uh, what, what do you call it, the iPhone 8s <laughs> or some shit like that, bro. Get out of here with that. Haggery under pressure. And you, you were saying that women want a man that what? Uh, they want a man who knows what he values, a man who's good at building something, a man who's you know, multi-dimensional and integrated, who can be masculine, but is also uh, emotionally aware, intelligent, and fearless when it comes to achieving his goals. Are you an Andrew Tate adherent? Uh, I'm not a dogmatist by any means, but I do think that he's serving a valuable role. I think that he's making a positive difference, and he does say a lot of controversial things because he's an extreme person. Like, he is not your normal, average guy. I wrote down some of the things that he said. All right, before we get to the things that he said here, let me just, there we go, much better. So right out, right from the jump, this is the first guy, I'm going to read my notes here, this is the first guy that they throw out onto the stage, right? This is before me, before anybody else. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. You hear that? This is the guy they throw out on stage before me? I mean, I'm Rolo Tomasi. <laughs> How dare they not, not not throw me in here to talk about these issues? I'm a coach. How, 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 how come they're throwing this guy over here? He's such a bend, dog. Like, come on. I say it with the five shots. He says, the problem is majority of people don't agree with majority of RP talking points, even conservatives. The right wing aren't misog misogynistic, just money hungry. That's facts. But you got to re realize that uh, a lot of talking points do cross over. Okay, so like the stuff with the um, anti-LGBTQ or like the anti-abortion, anything that basically uh, resembles, you know, getting women barefooted back in the kitchen. That's that that a lot of the alt-right and a lot of, you know, a lot of these pill poppers, they vibe with those talking points. Okay, matter of fact, that's what's getting them slowly ingratiated with 
the, the, the major right wing movement, right? Or alt right wing movement. It's because of these specific particular talking points. And honestly, they can easily like seeing these uh, talking points in with their matrix conversation, because a lot of people on the right are thinking that way. They think that all of this stuff with the media, with left wing politics, left wing institutions, is just one giant matrix designed to control them. And the red pill and their talking points, especially with Andrew Tate and what he's saying, fits right into that. So it makes sense that the, the grift is going to be seamless, uh, a seamless transition between red pill talking points and alt-right -right uh, alt -right conservative talking points. It just makes total sense. Anybody that doesn't see that, well, in this video reacting to today, Royal Tomasi basically confirms all of it. So we're not crazy. The leader of the red pill movement just confirmed what we've all been saying will happen for months now. We've been saying this shit since last year. Chat, put a one if you remember me making this exact prediction last year. I've been telling you guys the red pill isn't dead. It's just became conservative. A lot of y'all got mad at me because some of y'all are conservative. And it's not the shade on throw shade on you, y'all. I don't give a fuck about politics. I, listen, if you're conservative or if you're on the left, <laughs> I think you're both dumb. <laughs> I think the real truth lies somewhere in the middle, okay? So I don't get at me, but we did call this. We did call this. So all y'all out there making videos, red pills dead, hallelujah. They're not dead. They just became Republicans, okay? So uh, uh, not to say I told you so here, but we already said it earlier in the show. Go check it out. <laughs> Stop the presses. James Sexton, thank you very much. I don't know. I still think Ben is more credible than Pearl. Thank you. Yeah, well, that, I'm glad you brought that up, James, because I'm about to get to that point here in just a moment. However, um, before I do, just understand that this guy goes out first before anyone else does. So before the show is even like like from from the zero zero mark on the on the time queue, this is the first guy that they bring up. This is the credible witness. Um, this is the guy who uh, represents the red pill. This guy is your average red pill guy. Do you believe that? Do you think that this is actually the guy that should, that should be up there representing the red pill? I, I think so. I think that guy looks exactly like the average red pillar. No wonder they can't find girlfriends. I, I, I think exactly. I think the people you cater to look exactly like the niggas sitting across from Dr. Phil right now. I think y'all are all the same people. No wonder y'all. Because listen, I can't imagine a group of men that congregate another bunch of group of lamos like this old man over here and then listen to him for dating advice. You must look like the guy sitting across from Dr. Phil to go ahead and look at a guy like Roll to my and say, yeah, he's got good dating advice. Let me go buy his art of seduction books. Like you, you've already lost the plot. Okay, if you if you've turned the disposo right over here for dating advice, you're a loser. You've lost. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just is what it is, bro. Dev with the two shout out to you. Dev says, Rolo, it should have been me, not him, Tomasi. Yo, that's what this whole episode was about. I couldn't believe it, chat. When I saw this, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, yo. Yo, this is bad, Rolo. This is all types of bad. Yo, Donnie Michelle, shout out to you with the two dollar super chat. Donnie says red pill, red pillars are total hypocrites. Yeah, they're absolute hypocrites, man. And it's sad because they don't even see their own hypocrisy, even though they're reading it in other people. Watch. No, I don't think so. But they did. But they, the producers did this on person. And remember, I didn't even know. I don't know who this guy was until the day that was that that this was going on. Now I've talked to Ben since then, um, just sort of in the aftermath of it, just to sort of see. You know, it was a while ago now, but um, definitely on the spectrum. Definitely prescribed. Have told me personally that he was uh, prescribed with Asperger's syndrome. Nothing wrong with that. Just you know, I was just curious, like when we were talking afterwards. Um, but uh, I mean, I can tell you guys the backstory, but I, I have to be a little bit uh, careful how I sort of dance around that right now. But. Um, but this is important. I want you guys to understand why this is happening. Everybody in the chat, every single person in the chat, cringe, cringe, cringe. Um, actually, I'm literally cringing right now. That's what they were intending to do. That's what they wanted you to do. They wanted you to cringe. Someone like Rolo, who's they? Who, who's they? I need you to say names, please, okay? <laughs> I need you to say names. Whenever you're making an accusation there or a statement, you need to use the names of these individuals. Otherwise, it's relevant. Now, you might as well be saying, too. Why, why are you saying that? Does it? Who cares, right? I'm saying that for a specific reason because Rolo gets into it with another guy. I think his name is Mac or whatever the fuck it is. I guess he's another red pill popper, slightly doing better than Rolo in terms of uh, getting the younger audience uh, on board. All right, so he gets mad because uh, this Mac guy, whatever his name is, made some statements about <laughs> you know the red pill and uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, what do you call it? Some of the uh, talking points they've made, and Rolo got super pissed off. 
right? Says, I need you to state the people who made these statements. If you're going to call yourself a true red pill uh, uh, per influencer here, you need to cite your sources. All right, Rolo, we're going to hold you to the same standards, my boy. Absolutely cannot repeat. But he says, I think my sister is her husband's property. Would you agree with that line of thinking? Uh, not in the literal sense, no. Well, I understand. I don't, didn't have, yeah, well, I mean, it doesn't own her. women are obviously people, not objects, but uh -huh. it's a uh, one way. This looks like the average fresh and fit fan. Way of looking at things, you know, misogynistic as that might be. He, he describes a sexual encounter and says, that's how it goes. Slap, slap, grab, choke, shut up, bitch, sex. That's how it should be. Well, okay. Now, wait a minute. This is Robin McGraw, okay? Now look what she's look at look at the facial expressions here. Uh, that's why I use this on the in the in the thumbnail. Are you guys hearing this? Now look at all the people. Look at all the women in the back there. They look like they're just they, they're there for like some sexual assault survival survival you know group group therapy. How would you know? I think you're just making assumptions, bro. They're literally just a bunch of girls. Uh, yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> some sorts. I mean everyone. Look. I mean look at the dour looks. Look at the facial expressions here. The only one who is bright and bubbly and pink is is uh, Robin Robin McGraw. Well. If it's consensual, then it's all good. Okay. Okay. Notice the notice the people in the in the audience kind of like a little bit fidgety, a little bit a little bit cringy. Right? They all look. He says, "I'm not a blanking people. rapist, but I like the idea of being able to do what I want." Look, look. There's another girl over there. She had she has a bright colorful sweater on. I'm not a blanking rapist, but I like the idea of being able to. What about her right here? <laughs> she, she looks. She's dressed bright and colorful, bro. Do roll. what I want. And I don't believe women are as smart as men. That, there it is. Okay, so that's that's the money shot, or literally, that's the money shot right there. Okay, this is this is Robin McGraw getting that getting that natural, un, unprovoked, unsolicited response. Oh, that was really that sounds really misogynistic. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link. All right, so that's enough of that. Okay, let me back up out of that. Ah, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. So, what are we supposed? What's the take home message from this, children? What is the what is the what are we supposed to get from this? Why do you suppose they threw Ben on this show before I came on? Why do you think that is? I'll give you two answers. I'll give you two, ch two chances to, to answer that question. I'll tell you right now that the reason for that is because they wanted to till the fields. They wanted to set a narrative. They wanted to have a atmosphere of ridiculousness. All right? So essentially what they're doing is they're, cre they're creating this atmosphere that is really kind of the universal straw man. Like he's supposed to be who I'm going to have to follow, right? I've, I'm, I'm playing, I'm playing clear. I'm like the, the I'm like the, uh, the closing act for this because they wanted me on the show to really be there as a proxy for Andrew Tate, right? So what do they do? They bring on this most, the most ridiculous guy that they could possibly find. They put, they throw him on there. They put him in this big gigantic chair. His feet are dangling off like some little kid. You've got the, the, the women in the audience who are just visibly like, you know, you can tell they're bristling, right? Then you've got Robin, Robin um, McGraw back there just like, just yeah, like, because I'm sure if they invited you, Rolo, instead of that dweeb over there, you would have definitely elicited a, a penny drop situation with all the women in, in Dr. Phil's audience, right? If they would have just brought you on, oh my God, you would have had them panties dropping because clearly I'm Rolo Tomasi and I don't look like a dweeb. I just look like a 55-year-old trying to be a 26-year-old punk rock rock star. I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, I mean, look at that. You, you see how they brought that nerd out and all of their the women in the crowd were just, you know, there was just jittery and frigidary. Oh, my God. It's because they're trying to set a narrative, people. Okay? It's the narrative. Can't you see what they're doing? It should have been me up there. It should have been me, not that asshole. <laughs> Yo, y'all, y'all getting this now? Are y'all getting exactly what Rolo's putting down? Cause he, he's this is haters. This is a this is hating energy right here, bro. You just first of all, you're really you act like you did great when you were on Doctor Phil, my boy. Uh, I'm sorry, but you your, your your performance wasn't all that great. Okay, you just listen, listen. Maybe you got some help, uh, what do you call it, from your pill-popping fans when you got on there and they said, oh, Rolo, you did so great. You destroyed Dr. Phil. But I would have mounted to the same thing with this guy. For peace sakes, you showed up in a shirt and a blazer and you were still wearing your fucking beanie, bro. At least wear a hat that's appropriate with your suit. But you didn't, bro. For some reason, that beanie had to stay on, bro. <laughs> like, I mean, come on, dog. Like, just be real. You looked ridiculous, as ridiculous as uh, Mr. Uh, Baldy over here. I mean, it just is what it is, bro. Like, uh, what, what else 
what are you doing here? You, you sound like a hater. Uh, Isaiah treats with two dollars super chat. Shout out to you. He says, what laptops would you suggest for coding? Uh, I would say, I mean, anything. I, listen, i5 are better. Uh, would work. Um, I, I, but realistically, uh, it depends on what program you're trying to learn, right? Are you? I mean, you're trying to download an IDE, or you, I think i5, um, anything i5 processor better you would would work. Matter of fact, you can even if you're trying to learn like something as simple, I wouldn't say simple, but something as some some like uh, Java or something like that, you can do it right off a web browser too. Uh, like Chrome is excellent for that, right? So, um, I, I you can you can use Chrome and learn how to um write javascript with there or even html right you, there's a lot of free stuff online too as well but like web uh computer hardware wise anything with i7 better uh at least four gigs and above you'll you'll be all right <laughs> you'll be all right bro um you can pick one of those up for like 300 bucks on ebay right nothing too crazy well but shout out to you uh more deep with the five more deep says when an average woman hear the red pill for the first time they get stone faced and irritated minus robin's overreaction the women look like he is re is he retarded yeah that's how most people look at these red pill tards it's like are you are you guys dumb <laughs> they're like oh where, where do you guys where do you guys come up with these talking points a gape right and the from like remember this segment happens in the first five minutes before the first commercial break this is the first five minutes of this why are they doing this why would this be a thing why would a commercial television who's never and never recognized anything red pill whatsoever now remember this is november of 2022 and the build-up for this they called me i think it was september of that of that same year and so they're they're trying to you know get me to be get, get involved in this hey you want to be a part of this blah blah, blah. i'm like yeah okay what are we gonna talk about we're gonna talk about the crisis of masculinity yada yada it had nothing to do with it it was andrew tate on trial from the very from the from the from the jump i the first thing i told them was look like when i got up there i said because i knew what was going to happen and i had to defuse dr phil before i could get up because once i saw this happening i was like okay i've got to defuse this because i know where this is going now and i knew i was going to be walking into an ambush i knew i was going to be you know i, I was ready for it because people kept saying well Rolla, why are you, you said you would never do dr phil i didn't say i'd never do dr phil i said i would never do the show that they wanted me to do the first time which was in uh, ah bro you said you weren't gonna do dr phil bro back when you never thought you were gonna be part of it just like you're saying oh yeah i would never do joe rogan like ugh, fuck joe rogan but if he calls you right now you will drop that beanie and run to him let's just be real bro come on you you, you your, your fans caught you in the catch-22 here do you go with the mainstream media clout that you've always wanted or do you stick to your principles and they knew exactly what you would do you went for the clout rollo so stop lying it was it was, would have been myself versus tommy laren because i had gone after tommy laren for her uh guys ain't shit video and they really all they really wanted was entertainment they just wanted blood sport they just wanted bread and circuses they just wanted they just wanted gladiators right and i would when they sold me the idea of this i even still have the outline that they told me and i could i could probably read that outline to you and you'd be like that has nothing to do that was uh, like, can you check the email of that outline make sure it wasn't from a proton mail because <laughs> we got the we call the bimbo army out here bro okay because uh they not playing they got you three times bro. <laughs> they not, so you better check that email of that outline make sure it really came from a dr phil show my boy because <laughs> uh you've been embarrassed not once not twice all right three times so <laughs> and we still don't have them uh 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 details or evidence you had on britney venti okay so uh uh I, I i'd be wary of trusting rollo reading out any evidence he says he has okay unless he actually produces a screenshot while he's reading it so we can uh go ahead and attest to its value other than that uh rollo please read it and make sure you it's not it's not a proton mail <laughs> <laughs> imagine imagine if britney venti scammed rollo with like a, a what do you call it? one of these fake dr phil offers bro <laughs> that shit would be so hilarious dog it's too much <laughs> hey, yo britney don't do it that'd be an overkill but clearly we know he's desperate for clout like almost entirely nothing to do with what we, were, what we got into um then we had imran ahmed was on the show uh, i was the one who suggested that richard reeves be on the show they got richard reeves i was glad for that because i made a good connection with richard reeves um and they had Marilyn, who was the divorce attorney from Reno, Nevada, actually. Uh, and I was already familiar with uh, Marilyn because she had done an interview with Donovan Sharp. So little did the producers know. So who was walking into whose trap? But the um, the interesting thing to me was this, was I was told that this is what we're going to do and this is what we're going to talk about. And right from the rip, it was Andrew Tate this, Andrew Tate that. And they really, during the buildup to the show, they had asked me if I could get Andrew on. I texted Andrew. He wasn't, he was just, commit, he just had uh, converted to Islam back then. 
and he wasn't doing any shows. He certainly couldn't set foot in the United States for obvious reasons. And so I couldn't get him. They wanted me to ask him again if he would do a Zoom call. What do you mean for obvious reasons? Why, why couldn't he step into the United States? Huh? Can you, can you tell, we don't know what, uh, how obvious these reasons are. What, what are the obvious reasons that Tate couldn't step in the United States? Please tell He me. just had uh, converted to Islam back then. And he wasn't doing any shows. He certainly couldn't set foot in the United States for obvious reasons. I don't know and how obvious they are. So I couldn't get him. They wanted me to ask him again if he would do a Zoom call or if he'd do something via Skype. Wouldn't do that either. So I was kind of there sort of like the understudy for, for, for Andrew Tate. They really wanted Andrew. They really wanted to be able to run him up the flagpole. And quite honestly, I think I did a pretty good job. Um, I think Andrew might have done a good job too, but it just didn't work out that way. But I thought it was interesting. I'm wondering, had they been able to get Andrew Tate there instead of Roll Tomasi, would they have put Ben on there? Would they have put Ben up front or would they have just dug right in and gone right after Andrew Tate? And again, I am I am following up after having tilled the fields about Andrew Tate. I'm following up after they had already brought on Ben there. And essentially what this is meant to do is it's meant to set up a narrative, set up a ridiculousness. And that's really what it, what it kind of boils down to, because what they're doing is they're using Ben. And I, I was really I have to say that right after that segment because they they'll they'll kill the show while they go to while they cut to commercial and then they'll come back they'll reset the stage and everybody kind of sits there that's when i got up I, I i got to dangle my feet off i tried to put my foot on those those little you know steps on the side there um but if you are five nine or smaller you're probably gonna be dangling off like a child a small child um again meant to ridicule meant to make you look small um it's those uh then why would Dr. Phil not have a different chair for himself, Rolo? I think all of this shit's in your head, just like your fucking women ideas on women, okay? It's all in your head, because uh, Dr. Phil was sitting on the same chair too, bro, so was he trying to make himself look like a, sh a child, or was it just the fact that that's what they had for the core, all right? Because it would have made sense if Dr. Phil had a low chair and he made all of his guests sit up high, right? Then I would say, okay, you know what? In the aim of what Rolo's talking about, okay, it kind of makes sense. But the fact that they both sat in the same chair, okay, if one looked ridiculous to you, the other one definitely looked ridiculous too. They feet were both dangling, Rolo. So, again, I, I, what are you talking about? Uh, kind of subtle subconscious things that uh, that they, they they work into the work into the thing. Now, granted, they do have to lift you up a little bit. I can, I can understand that. But just, maybe it was just the way that the, the camera angles were set up in the studio. But I think they probably could have. I mean, it's the fucking Dr. Phil show. They could have you know, done anything they wanted to. They got a budget, trust me. Um, so when I'm there, I'm watching this happen and I can see what they're doing is they're setting up Ben to be the fall guy, to be the patsy, to be the one who looks ridiculous. And why do I keep bringing up the term ridiculous? Well, the reason because is if you are familiar, maybe you are, maybe you aren't. If you're familiar with, uh, where did I put it? Well, if you're familiar with, uh, what's, what's it called? Rules for Radicals by Saul Alinsky. Uh, I, I want to say it's like rule number three is ridicule your opponents, right? Because there's no defense against ridicule. There's no way. I mean, it, it enrages and, and really kind of sets people off if you're not prepared for it. If you're not like somebody who is like have, has sort of like the mental wherewithal to see that you're being fucked with, right? So what they're doing is they're trying to set up this narrative that the red pill is ridiculous. And how did they do that? They used Ben as their straw man. They turned him into what they wanted him to be. They turned him into the person that was going to be the functional representative of the red pill. And now I have to go up and I have to go and justify what the red pill is. And I have to explain things say, okay, ladies and gentlemen, this guy has been fucking with you. Everything that we've done up to this point has been a big fucking you know, dog and pony show. What? That's definitely not what you did when you get up, get, got up there. And second of all, no, okay? You look equally as ridiculous as the guy that was there before you, okay? And no, they, listen, again, stop hating, bro. Oh, yeah, they, they brought this guy out in front of me because they wanted everyone to think that he was the face of the red pill. Bro, okay, no one is disputing that you're the fucking godfather, okay? No one disputes that because anyone who decides to call themselves a godfather of a red pill movement, okay, they're already just in, they're just lame by real world standards. It's just being real. I mean, you could be the godfather of anything, bro, but the red pill, really, dude? Okay, it's kind of it's kind of lame, dog. Okay, and then when people start realizing what the red pill is really about, yeah, it, it, it definitely doesn't improve their perception of you. Okay, so you trying to say, oh, see, this is all a setup. They they brought Ben on, all right, to make him look like that he was the face of the red pill, but it was really me. It was really me the whole time, guys. <laughs> I mean, is he on these mainstream media? Is that he just play tricks on you? Oh my god, like, bro, <laughs> just stop. 
you both were on the show. First of all, what's the point of this, bro? Can you get to the fucking point? Why are you bringing up old wounds, huh? Are you like what? What's up? He's, he's gonna get to it too. It has a lot to do with Pearl here. Okay, all of this, believe it or not, has a lot to do with Pearl. <laughs> but he takes a while to get to it. But oh, yo, nefarious bread. Shout out to you for the five. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. And um. And let me explain to you. So one of the first things I said was like, because he was, uh, Dr. Phil has like this script that he's reading from. He's coming out of, you can see it. I mean, he's got it on the show. He's got a, a binder that his producers give to him of all the points he's supposed to get to at certain points in the, at like certain time cues in the, in the, uh, in the show. And one of the first ones that he throws at me was like, you know, do you agree with this? And I said, look, I said, Andrew Tate, his source material is my books. Simple as that. Uh, pretty much everybody in this sphere. I think Andrew Tate would disagree. <laughs> I think Andrew Tate would disagree, bro. All right. Yeah, his source material, all of the shit he said, he came from my book. All right. Andrew Tate wouldn't have been shit without me. All right. The red pill ain't got nothing on me. I built this shit. Well, you think Andrew Tate's original? I did that. I'm the real dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can we get the feds to watch him too? Huh? We don't know how many of uh, Andrew Tate's talking points he stole or whatever it is, right? Or Andrew Tate stole. But if he's claiming credits for some of the shit that Andrew Tate says, can we revisit that and possibly investigate Rolo? Okay. Because, <laughs> I mean, if you're going to claim credit for Andrew Tate and his shenanigans, knowing fully well he's being federally investigated right now, not by one country, but by two different countries. All right. Listen, bro, <laughs> I'm not claiming nothing that nigga says. I don't care. Care. He hey, keep him away from me, bro. All right, but if anything, here's this dumbass. I, I said that everything he got came from me. Yep, that's right, <laughs> nigga. What? And it's not like you're saying this back when Andrew Tate wasn't facing legal issues. You're saying this during the time where he was facing legal issues for precisely the shit he was saying online. So again, you guys are fucking stupid, bro. Like honestly, I, I, I like you, you pretend you guys have high IQs, but you guys are fucking stupid. If Andrew Tate wants to say what Andrew Tate wants to say, let him claim it because he's going through legal problems precisely because of that. Jeez. Is using my my books or some derivative of my work that I've been doing for the last 20 some odd years and has been pretty much either bastardizing it, using it for their own commercial interests. And very few people okay. are sticking to right, really what you. the, the sort of the, the core praxeology is <laughs> when it comes to, well, at least from my perspective, the intersexual dynamics of the red, the quote unquote red pill. Um, and then one of the first things I said was like, look, I'm not here to be an apologist for Andrew Tate. I'll let you guys go settle that. But I will say this is where Andrew Tate is picking his stuff up from is my work. Is he bastardizing it? Well, yeah, if he's talking about, you know, slapping bitches around and everything, that's a practice. That's that's what he comes up with his his best practices. Uh, ben comes up with some other best practice. But wow. So you really tying your name to all that shit, Rolo. Really? Like it, it all it just just because you're desperate to have the world remember that you were this guy who built the red pill. You're going to attach your name to the shit that Andrew Tate says? Yeah, I mean, even though it's bastardized, I mean, more or less. I mean, it came from my shit. He just expresses it differently. Similar to Ben, he does it differently too. But they're all different parts of my work. I'm just saying. <laughs> bro, Tomasi. <laughs> like, bro, you're fucking stupid. I always thought you're an idiot, Rolo, but this, <laughs> this is this is just a, this is just all around bad dog. Like, hey, can we investigate Rolo? I think we should, bro. I think we might find something. I, I don't know, bro. Yo, Nefarious Bread, shout out to you for the ten dollar super chat. Can we get a W in the chat for Nefarious Bread? This is the fifth super chat. I appreciate it, bro. Thank you so much. Let me get them dubs in the chat. Nefarious Bread says, "How do you feel about game dev? I've been working about five years uh, for about five years." in c hash and learning c hash hash all right so can i use un i can use so i can use unreal and understand all the hats uh that you need to wear but is it he says i understand all the hats you need to wear but it's what i want to do are you are you trying to work with a company so because you've been working for five years on uh c uh c hash so or c sharp however you guys want to call it i call it c hash but um 
it, it, are you currently working with the company? Because first of all, I don't, I'm I don't know C hash. <laughs> like I know a little bit, but not enough to be like dangerous. Like that 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 that's a to me that's completely different. That's a whole different feel for me. Uh, but I would say for game development, uh, are you trying? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to get your own um like your own little working studio and contract with other people to develop something or work as part of a team or are you working as part of a corporation that's building something or you're trying to find a job? Like it all depends on where your uh direction is. But if you're fluent in C sharp, dude, the world is your freaking limit, dude. Like I'm not, I'm not joking. Like game developers are looking for people with your skills right now. It's it's not even a joke. So if you're if you're fluent in C sharp, dude, you're good. <laughs> you're freaking good. So if you're if your goal is to try to find or work with the company, as long as you're fluent, dude, you're, I think you should be fine. Um, but if your goal is to try to start something and you're already talking about you understand the hats that need to be worn then i would just say that you know if you understand a hat i would learn those hats that need to be worn learn how to delegate and learn what you're good at and and you know just learn how to bring a team together if that's the direction all right and um to do that just make sure you have a solid project right and some of these projects you know, new companies crowdfunding this stuff all the time so i mean find a project you're passionate about and then try to build a team around it that that I mean, all depends, but if you got if you're fluent in C sharp, dude, you're set. <laughs> you're freaking set, bro. That is that is that is a tough I mean, it's tough. I'm not even saying I'm not even gonna hold you, bro. That that's a that's a tough language. So I, I just shout out to you for doing that, bro. Uh, let's get oh lay with the five dollars super chat. Lay says uh emailed you Myron slipped and praised Hitler, and Donnie Boy declared that Myron is the leader of the Manosphere, and he is a mix between KS and Andrew. Play the video. Oh. We don't have to take a look at that. But um, I think Rolo confirms it in this video, too, that Myron Gaines and Pearl are going to be the future of the Red Pill. So there's definitely something happening, people. There's definitely something happening. I, I, I think we're in the moment where we're witnessing the transfer of the torch, all right, from the old guard to the new guys over here. And I think if Rolo's going to be saying that in this video and we already got these guys, uh, what, what is this, uh, um, uh, what, what's his face? Donnie Boy saying this. Uh, it, it's probably the direction we're going because we know Donnie Boy gets his uh, MO from Rolo. Okay. So it, it, it kind of makes sense. I can see that happening. Ben does not strike me. This kid does not strike me. This kid right here does not strike me as somebody who should be a sexual energy coach. Okay. Just saying. Neither. Ro Ro Rolo. Neither are you. <laughs> the, the fact that you have a book on seduction is laughable, dog. You don't look like a guy that should have a book on anything related to seduction. But here you are ridiculing another guy. And, and, and what, you think you could do any better? Get the fuck out of here. Um, look, I'm not a sexual energy coach. This guy most definitely is not a sexual energy coach. All right. Just throwing that out there. So when you see this guy... It's this kind of cringeworthy. He looks like you know, kind of look like, looks like he's a conehead, and I. It's easy to goof on him, right? It's easy to ridicule him, and I was pissed off when I saw this. When I saw them bring him up there, because there he doesn't know. He's not like, I mean, he doesn't understand that they're using him to be an idiot, to be the village idiot, to be the guy who's represented. Oh, this is the red pill. <laughs> look, they all look like this. They all sound like this. They all look. Like this. They all have big moon heads, right? That's <laughs> what we're supposed to get. If you completely have no initiation of the red pill. This is what we're supposed Rolo, to do. You're both wearing glasses. For all we know, he could be your grandson or your fucking nephew. So why why are you sitting there making fun of him? Oh, look at this goofy kid. Hey, look at you. Look at you, dog. <laughs> like, you look goofy. You got, bro, you're dressed like you're having a midlife crisis right now, dog. What are, you, what, are you, what are you laughing at the kid for? Leave him alone, bro. I mean, you both were on the show. Why are you getting mad? This you see as so the bad. front as the face, right? This was he's the representative of the red pill, and now everybody who follows him up, we can now ri ridicule him. Can you believe this? Even Robin McGraw from the very beginning is like, which says to me, can you believe this? Can you believe this is actually a thing, right? And of course, everybody's kind of like, you know, the, all the women in the audience are kind of like, it's all very, very cringeworthy. But the reason why they're doing that is because they're setting up a narrative. They're setting up this, setting him up to be the fall guy is basically what they're doing. And I was pissed off because he's not. Mentally, there enough to understand that they're fucking with him, and you He's are like no, doesn't understand the guy that says young men in their twenties should get visectomies so they can be on their journey to high value, be uh, high value men. All right, that was your idea, and everyone ridiculed you for it, and you still can't answer what a high value man is. All right, but yet you you got the sauce now, really, Rolo. This is crazy. Understand that the questions that are coming out of. Dr. Phil's mouth are meant to ridicule him. They sound honest. They sound like he's he's being really straightforward. And granted, he was the kid was nervous. Don't get me wrong. You could tell just in the tone of his voice, he's very, very nervous. Um, 
even like when I was getting up there, I understand. I realized it's on. I, there's, I think there's like maybe 300 people in the uh, in the audience, and so I'm used to playing to. I mean, hell, I got 2174 right now. I'm used to playing to that. I'm used to playing to much to much larger audiences. So like seeing 300 people in the audience is like no big deal to me. Shut up, dog. Okay, seeing three people, 300 people in real life is definitely different than seeing 2100 people on your live chat okay these are people in real life looking at you talking or even making faces at you whatever you can see them okay but you said comparing that to online is it's miles in day okay <laughs> night and day different miles apart all right so you can't just sit there and say oh well i'm used to talking in front of 2100 people so 300 people live it's not it's nothing to me no it's, it's completely different so the kid had the right to be nervous all right most people can't even get up in front of a cloud of maybe six people or 10 people okay but in front of 300 people and in that millions of people watching the show on cameras all right yeah it, it, it's got to be nerve-wracking so stop trying to play this shit down because it seems like that's what like, people it can be very intimidating i understand especially if you're not used to this kind of stuff it's one thing to go and do tiktok it's an entirely different animal to do something where it's like um we're doing something live and i know i've played some pretty big shows when i with my bands in the, in the past too and it can i can definitely say that the bigger the crowds the more intimidated you end up getting but uh, at least in the beginning, right? Until you get used to it. But they knew this. They know it was going to be intimidating. They knew he wasn't sort of altogether there. They, they knew that they could ridicule him them. and make fun of him. He wouldn't even know that he was being made fun of. So it's almost like the mean kids or the big kids are like the, in middle school that are like sort of beating up on this one kid. And I felt bad and I was pissed. Why so, are you feeling bad? Rolo, don't you realize the people felt the same way when you came up there? <laughs> and guess what? If it was you or Andrew Tate, we would still feel the same way. <laughs> like, look at these clowns. Like, why well, would even, why would Dr. Phil waste his time bringing these losers up here? All right. That, bro, it would be the same energy, Rolo. Okay. Just because they brought that kid up there for, and we're calling him a kid, but he's, he's clearly a grown ass man. Just because they brought that man up there before you and you're you're over here just judging the hell out of his appearance because he doesn't look as cool and as punk rocky as you are right, bro get the fuck out of here because we're still laughing at you matter of fact do i have a hold up let me see if i can get a, a clip of Roll tomasi on that show hold up hold up let me let me, let me see if i can get roll on that show let me let me, let me put this look, look at this here it is right here let, we got an eight second clip of you on Robert here. Is a you look ridiculous rollo <laughs> you look ridiculous. Why do you still have the beanie on with a suit? Huh? At least get a hat that works. I'm sure the women are clowning you based off of that right now. All right? Y'all y'all see me. Listen, whenever you see me wear a suit, even on this show, all right, either wear a hat that works with a suit or you don't see me wear a hat. Those y'all who wonder, oh, Duke, I wonder what you look like without a hat. I have plenty of videos on this channel right now, all right? My hairline is, is, is back here. I have to salute from the top of my head, dog. All right? So I got no problem with that. But you, you, you got to wear the clothes that fit the attire all right so you're not gonna see me wear a baseball cap with a suit on that doesn't make any sense <laughs> just take the hat off when you're in a professional setting we're laughing at you right now rollo so you sitting there clowning the kid because he looks dorky what do you what the fuck do you think people are saying right now huh <laughs> like look at this clown in a fucking beanie like why is he wearing a beanie with a suit uh, like again stop clowning the guy let me actually see what what, what you were talking a about very successful woman she doesn't need me for a damn thing she's entrepreneurial she what i want you yeah thank you so you're superfluous then <laughs> what's that so you're superfluous then how does that make help. me superfluous you're nice to have around she meant, i think you meant financially not emotionally not spiritually yeah. not but, connectively you yeah. can't think of relationships beyond control and, and ownership yeah. and power no, wait a minute. it's not let, about no, that it's not about that at all the fact that she doesn't have to have me to exist does it mean that I'm not essential to who she is? We've been together for 46 years. She doesn't need me to buy her a new car. She doesn't need me to buy her a house. She doesn't need me to do the things she's competent. She, if she wants to go to Hong Kong tomorrow, she doesn't need me to make the arrangements. But I am a part of her DNA. I'm part of her life. If I was missing, it would be a huge impact on her. That's why I'm not superfluous. You can't be that narrow-minded. What I'm saying is that she does. You just said a minute ago that she doesn't need you. That she doesn't need you for your for her existence. Financially, that's all you. Is it a financial thing? <laughs> Rolo, you look like you're losing this one. Why are you laughing at a guy that claiming he didn't do his? Uh, he, he didn't do good, right? Because they they wanted to set a narrative. You you sound nervous. Maybe it's because I had it sped up. Let me let me slow it down real quick. Cause you know how Rolo is when he talks. Right, but to me, Chad, he seems nervous in this, right? Like he can't even. Or is it yes. a personal? That's 
No, there there are so many dimensions to a relationship. Facts. And I, I will stay with what I said. She doesn't need me. If I die today, she will be fine. Financially. Emotionally. No. I she disagree. will be fine. She will but not be she, fine. But... but she wants me to be in her life. And I want her to be emotionally strong enough, mentally strong enough, financially planned out enough that I don't have to be there for her to be okay. You, you can't wrap your head around that. So she that? doesn't need you. Is that what you're saying? You interrupted him so you could be right. How am I he wrong? Wasn't finished. How, how am I wrong about your relationship here? He's you just saying him. that he do, you don't he you won't well, you'll be fine you without him. Yeah, that that's uh, uh, Rolo. I don't know how you don't get this. <laughs> yeah, matter of fact, that's what you should all be looking for in a woman, especially if a woman you guys want to marry. Y'all y'all are looking for women who are super dependent on you. Listen, you shouldn't want that. Okay, yeah, you know, family wise, sure, whatnot, fine, you can have that. But mostly, especially in today's day and age, you want a woman who knows how to take care of herself. Okay, if a woman is totally dependent on you and something happens to you, guess what? If she's gonna go jump on another man's cock, why? Because all she knows how to do at that point is to be dependent on another man, all right. Versus a woman, especially if you have kids with her, right? A woman who knows how to do for herself and take care of herself and doesn't quite need you when you're here or when you're gone, all right. Listen, if something were to happen when you're gone, you best believe that your kids are gonna get taken care of. And the first thing on her mind isn't to go jump into another man's bed just because she doesn't have the skills to take care of herself. All right, isn't that the one thing y'all red pill poppers want to avoid? Right. First of all, you can't control anybody when you did, but still, right? It's the principle for y'all that matters. So when why won't you go with a woman who at least knows how to take care of herself? in this type of economy that we're in right now. So she doesn't have to solely depend on you. Look at, man, you guys don't understand. Their families right now, I, we said, uh, a family, relative of ours, right? Like, essentially, the wife is all that's alive right now. Husband died, killed by a drunk driver, right? Wife, two kids. She has to go hat in hand to the rest of us and the Igbo community here for us to give money to, to be able to take care of her and her kids. Why? Because husband's gone. And husband took care of everything. But now he's dead, killed by an irresponsible drunk driver. And that shit is common here in Wisconsin. Like, we got a shit ton of drunk drivers here out here. All right? So now we got wife or widow, two kids, who's going around to the community depending on that to not only bury this guy because you got to send the body to Nigeria, but th to, to also take care of the kids and her for a few months while they get back on their feet, right? You got to understand, like, if she, you, you when you want a partner, someone who is gonna roll through it throughout life and this, the, the, this gauntlet we call life, okay, you need both to know exactly how to take care of themselves. This red pill narrative where you think the man has to be the breadwinner, protector, provider, all that, in this day and age, it just doesn't work. It, it just doesn't work to that the extent that you guys dream it was. This isn't the 1920s where one guy can get a job and take care of an entire family. It's not that time anymore, all right? Men and women both have to know exactly what's going on. So Dr. Phil's right. Point, My point is this, is that we've made masculinity superfluous right now. We've made men superfluous right now. How is she right not now. in your same story? How is she not superfluous to him in the same story? You, exactly. That's the that's the mm. point. We are better together than we are apart. Well, then we are innate and natural compliments to one another. Would you agree that with that? That does not make us superfluous. I feel like we're a bit stuck because I feel like what we're saying is that unless there's a dependency relationship, unless one person is dependent on the other, then they're then one of them superfluous. Whereas what I see is a world where two people who are independent choose to be together, and that's more beautiful. It's more beautiful and moving for me when two it's people who don't, and who, who, safer. yeah, and they want it. And what happens, happens in that world? Okay. Isn't choice more beautiful than need? It's safe too. And and here's the thing: like there is a lesson here for parents around the country who are watching all of this, who are thinking, "Well, I'm trying to raise kids right now. It's a tough world out there, and we're all Fact. trying to get by." And there are lots of voices. The, the first thing is that we are now in an even tougher battle because social media is pushing the most extreme, the most hateful voices, normalizing them in our society. There are people that want to tell you how to live your life that will actually end up with you living a really miserable life and finding it really difficult to navigate the eddies of trying to be a decent human being and trying to love another person and be loved by that person. 
And I think that today, I've tried to keep as quiet as possible because I thought that you spoke for yourself, Rollo. And I think a lot of parents would be thinking, crumbs. I want to make this sure work. That... Look at this guy. Hey, hey, Rollo, it seems like your hair is blacker in this video than it was a few months ago when you were on Dr. Phil. So uh, it seems like anybody who's been wondering if this guy's been using hair dye, uh, wonder no more, because <laughs> clearly he's dyeing his hair, dog. Like, I mean, what is this? Like, who wears a fucking suit with a beanie, bro? Like, that shit don't even make any sense, dog. Come on. When I went in there, if you, if you, I don't have the video queued up for it, but if you go and you look at my first show where I'm first, I, I kind of come on the scene right after Ben, I'm, I'm going in there with fucking fire in my eyes right there. That's, I didn't use a superfluous line then. But I did say, hey, look, I'm not here to be a, an apologist for Andrew Tate. I don't know what you guys want me here for, but I, that ain't it. And so from that point on, it set the tone for the rest of the, full, the rest of that show. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This guy definitely set the tone for the rest of the show. Oh, my God. Yeah, people weren't laughing at this guy, especially when he couldn't wrap his mind around how two independent people can come together and work together, but they don't necessarily need each other. No, no, he doesn't understand that concept at all. But he, in his mind, his old ass mind, he thinks he bodied everyone in the show and set the tone. That's right. I set the tone for the rest of the show. Bro, it seems like you're the odd one out here. It seems like you're the only one who has no idea what the hell is going on. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, Rolo. And that came, that energy came from me getting pissed off that they had used Ben sort of as their patsy, right? As their foil, as the guy who was going to be the fall guy. This is the one, this is how we're setting things up. Okay. So with that in mind, it's very easy to ridicule. It's very easy to have this as the atmosphere. Now, what I want you guys to do is let, let, let's completely take this out of the realm of Dr. Phil right now. This was supposed to be the debut of Andrew Tate on Dr. Phil. This was supposed to be the debut of the red pill goes mainstream. And this is your debutante ball red pill. And the first person at the debutante ball is Ben. And then Rollo shows up. Sort of just to set everybody straight. And I'm glad I was there to do that. So I am glad I did the actual, the actual interview. But they set him up like this because they wanted to till the fields. They wanted everyone to think a certain thing about the red pill. It wasn't about Ben. They just use, it could have been anybody. They just use Ben as the straw man to set up a universal understanding of what the red pill was. Okay, track with me here. People like Pearl Davis are yep. Ben. People like Destiny are Ben. On a bigger, wider, more global scale, more, more, more worldwide, more uh, social media, you know, expansive, Pearl Davis is Ben. They are making fun of, she's supposed to be the red pill representative. You can look at, uh, at uh, let's say, you can even, I can apply this also to Destiny, which I'm going to later on when we get to the Candace Owens thing here. Um, and yes, I will talk about Candace Owens. People are, what about fresh and fresh? What about, don't worry, settle down. Let me, let me get, let me work up to this. Okay. <laughs> Pearl Davis is Ben. Destiny is Ben. You're going to see other people who are easy to ridicule, who are easy straw men to use so that they can be knocked down by the people who need to. And the reason why they need to is because we're in an election cycle and we're in an election year. The whole thing with, uh, Hannah, the the, uh, the 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 catfish noodling girl, and Samira, what's her name? Catfish girl is Ben. She's meant to be ridiculous. That's why I'm using all of these today, by the way. Meant to be ridiculous. Meant to set the stage. You wouldn't want to vote for somebody who would like actually want to mare wife up catfish girl, would you? What about the Victorian secret, Victoria's Secret models, right? And it's meant to cause this class warfare. It's meant to cause this sort of culture class. It's intentional the way that they're doing this. And the same thing applies to Pearl Davis. The same thing applies to Destiny. They are meant to be the patsies. They are meant to be the fall guys. That's why they're there. That's why their names are in everyone's fucking mouth. That's why they can't name another. That's why Daily Wire. Daily Wire is Dr. Phil in this situation. <laughs> Daily Wire what? wants to use Pearl Davis what? as the face of the revenue. That's the bed. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. Oh, I just didn't know what I was doing. Come in. Somebody come in and help me out here. I can't defend a single point, but I'm happy to go and throw out all these Molotov cocktails when it's a slow news cycle. That's what her purpose is. So why am I getting into this? The reason I'm getting into this is because I'm sick of fucking death of this. I've been doing this for 22 some odd years and I've seen this happen. It happened in 2015, 2016, happened in 2019 through 2020 and it's happening right fucking now. Exactly the same fucking things, right? The same buildup. Everybody thinks the red pill needs to be whatever, they're, whatever they want it to be. So I'm sick to death of hearing these fucking trad thoughts talking about like, oh, well, the red pill always says this. And I'll tell you something, like, you wanna know how I know that they're using, and I'm not just gonna pick on Pearl, there's other people as well. But the reason why they won't name names is because they don't know any fucking names. They don't know anyone else. They don't know anybody else, else except for Andrew Tate, who's, you know, in all likelihood is going to end up in some Romanian prison for all, all we know at this point. Oh! <laughs> oh! You're Godfather of the Red Bull. 
is admitting that, yeah, uh, listen, Andrew Tate's going to end up in prison, bro. <laughs> hey, yo. Wow. Why, why do you guys think he's not drinking that Andrew Tate Kool-Aid? Because uh, this is definitely setting up some rifts between everyone else who still believes in the Tate jargon, right? So the fact that even the godfather of the Red Pill is admitting that this guy is going to prison in Romania, okay? Listen. It just so goes to show you this matrix argument they like to use on people is complete and utter trash, okay? It's just trash out here trying to convince people of anything else aside from the truth, okay? But they know the truth, even Myron and them. They know this already. If you think Rolo knows this and Myron doesn't, you're high, okay? You're probably higher than me right now. But they know this. They know that Andrew Tate, is going to prison. They're just milking this for clout. The only reason why he he's dumb enough to just say the quiet part out loud is because Roll Tomasi actually. The, I think him and Andre Tate they don't get along. At least the way he thinks they should. Okay, so Roll Tomasi in his mind doesn't feel like he owes anything Andrew Tate. Because for instance. It's like Andrew Tate is going to be like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to go to a Roll Tomasi show, all right, and do a, do a collab with Roll Tomasi. Roll knows he's not getting that kind of shine no more, right? So, of course, he's just going to, you know, say the quiet part out loud because he doesn't give a fuck about what Andrew Tate thinks, all right, because he's not getting that clout. So, it makes sense. If he's willing to admit that, come on now, I think you Tater Tots needs to wake up. May, I'm not saying I hope he does. I'm just saying in all likelihood, that's the way it's starting to look right now. Oh, And who are they going to have? Pearl Davis? They're going to have Destiny. Destiny was on Pierce Morgan with Tommy Laren discussing Palestine versus Israel foreign policy. Really, Pierce? Re these, we don't have anyone better that we could actually have some sort of like knowledge and statescraft that know anything. Hell, even Samira, what's her face, is at least some foreign policy wonk. Why not her? No, because we need someone ridiculous. And, and on both sides, by the way, Tommy Laren is just as Tommy Laren is just as much Ben as Destiny is. They just want they they want the dog and pony show. They don't want solutions. They don't want answers. They don't want any kind of education. They don't want constructive criticism. They don't want constructive discussion. They want blood. They want bread and circuses. That's why you can't get her out of your fucking mouth. That's why Destiny is on with Candace Owens right now. That's what, by the way. That's also why Candace Owens is on on with Fresh and Fit right now, or was anyways. This, this, this dude is hating right now, bro. He's hating so hard. You know what? Come to think about it, when was the last time Rolo was on Fresh and Fit? Could y'all, could y'all help me answer that question? When was the last time Rolo Tomasi of all people was uh, on Fresh and Fit? Maybe that could add to his frustration here, but something's not making any sense to me. We'll, we'll, we'll return to that here in just a moment. But they are Ben. And the people who want a Ben are the producers of of. of Dr. Phil, <laughs> Pierce Morgan wants a Ben. Matt Walsh wants a Ben. Uh, Candace Owens wants a Ben. She already got, she got it. She got it in Destiny just what two days, not even 24, about a little over 24 hours ago. She got it. Congrats. Bravo. You fucking played yourself. Awesome. So when we're talking about, when we see somebody going, oh, we're going to go head to head. There's going to be a debate. There's going to be a heated debate. No, you're looking at Ben versus Dr. Phil. That's what you're looking at. You don't care about construction. You don't care about solving problems. You don't care about understanding. You don't care about education. You don't fucking care about the red pill, period. And so just like, why don't we just admit it at this stage? I mean, we're saying the silent parts out loud right now. Why don't we just fucking cop to what, what the fuck we're doing, right? It's all about clout. It's clout economics at this stage. Whoa, you, you fucking hypocrite. You acting like you weren't a part of this whole shit. Can y'all believe this? He, he's getting mad at them saying, oh, all you guys are doing is it's all for clout. That's what it is, right? Y'all don't care about the red pill no more. Bro, isn't that the same grift you've been on? Why are you getting mad now? It's because no one has paid attention to you. How many views does this video get? <laughs> 24,000 views in eight days, bro. Oh, Lord. It's not looking good for Rolo. Because Rolo, typically, if you guys know Rolo, he used to have a hardened fan base. Okay? So, on average, you get about 50,000 views per video. On average, right? He doesn't usually get lower than that. But even seeing this, 24,000 views... I mean, it, it's a noticeable dip in what he usually do. Let me let me pull up his full channel here. Let me let me go ahead and do a full investigation here because I think something's wrong. <laughs> so like, I think Rolo might be reaching that point where his channel is probably becoming relevant, right? Because it didn't make sense. Otherwise, why is he hating so hard? Like, chat. This don't make no. S oh, chat. Yo, chat. I might be right. Look. Chat, 
Look, the one re- here's the one we're reacting to right now, right? And no, no, that's not that one. It's this one right here. But this one got 21k views. This one got 7,000 views. This one's got 20,000, 24,000, 27, 21, 7,000, 8,000. Whoa. You mean this video did better on Mike Sartain's channel over Rolo's channel? What? 23K, 19K. 19, 29, 12K, right here. This is what, on average, you would see on a Roll Tomasi video, right? About 50,000 views. But the fact that we're seeing these crazy lopsided numbers, even the last, the last, last time we reacted to them was during a Matt Walsh video. We reacted to this. I remember because we can even see the, the, the play line here, all right? 53,000 views, 41,000 views, 109,000 views, right? 21,000, 46. So clearly he used to have higher views and now it's all trending downwards. So it makes sense. Look, look at this clown. Look, look at this. <laughs> Y'all see this photo over here? <laughs> I mean, this guy wears blazers with beanies, dog. I, I, I don't understand it. Like, it don't make any sense. But I'm starting to see it. Yo, chat is starting to make sense to me. It seems like he, he's seen everybody else go by. And like his shine is starting to hit the decline. That that's what that, it's the only thing that makes sense to me right now because I don't know why he's hating so hard. So where are we gonna go from here? Because I'm gonna call this bullshit out every time I see this. That's why I started with Ben and 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 uh, Dr. Phil, because Dr. Phil wanted to till the fields. He wanted to ridicule him. And you know what? Pearl Davis. The reason why people say, "Why does he have such a problem with Pearl Davis?" Maybe it was when he was on that show and he, he brought on like Nick Flint. I had a problem with her before that. I had a, definitely had a problem with her after that. The reason I had a problem with her before that is she is not a good representative of the Red Pill. I've said Myron Gaines is a fantastic representative of the Red Pill. I hope I can continue to keep saying that. Y'all hear that? I hope I can say that about my Myron Gaines. I hope I can continue to say that. One thing you got to understand about Rolo is he's very subliminal, all right? And you guys know how I know? It's because if you watch the whole Adam Sosnick catastrophe unfold, all right, Rolo was playing the exact same game he's playing now, but except instead of Adam Sosnick, He's doing it with Myron. He's slowly hinting at Myron and the Fresh and Fit crew. If y'all don't think there's some tension bubbling up within the surface, you're high right now. Probably higher than me. But absolutely, he's making a statement here. I hope I can continue to say that about Myron being a good representative of the Red Pill. Now, the right reason why he says that is because, well, guess what? Myron and Pearl are now collabing. That's right. The biggest channel on the Red Pill right now and Pearl are now back together, and it's pissing Rolo off immensely, okay? So he's throwing subliminal shots at Myron right now, and it's true. But here's the thing. If you don't think – if you think well, – let me, let me just make this clear. If you think Pearl isn't a good representation of the red pill, but Myron is for some reason – you're crazy. <laughs> like, they're both terrible. <laughs> a matter of fact, all of y'all are horrible. Just throw y'all niggas in the trash right now. Okay, but to think that Myron is somehow good, but Pearl is bad, they're both the same people. They, bro, Pearl grifted off of Myron to get where she's at right now. They're both the same people, okay? It, it, she's Myron with extra steps. That's pretty much what it is. So, for you to sit there and say one is good, but the other is bad, even though they both are doing the same thing. Uh, yeah, bro. It seems like you you hating. <laughs> you, bro, you just, why are you hating, dog? <laughs> like, why are you hating so bad, bro? What's wrong with you, dog? You should be proud of your youngins right now. You should be proud of them, right? <laughs> why are you hating, dog? <laughs> but up to this point, I think he's doing pretty good, a pretty damn good job. You know what? But he's not going, he's not a, he's not a Ben. Myron is not Ben. Pearl Davis most definitely has been. Ridiculous. And should have and the, the red pill and the manosphere and everything that we've been putting together, everything we've been doing for, well, at least in my case, the last 20 plus some, I'm going to two years now. All of that, all of that is misrepresented by the Ben that is Pearl Davis, right? Simple <laughs> no, as that. And again, bro, I'm just going to say, it. why just Pearl? You did a podcast with Saint the Sinner. Am I wrong? Chat, am I wrong? Or didn't I see a podcast with Fresh and Fit, Saint the Sinner, Mike Sartain, and Rolo Tomasi front and center? So if Pearl is a problem, why not say the same thing about Sus Marquardt? 
because he clearly doesn't give a shit about the red pill. And matter of fact, there are times where he's claimed he's not a red pillar, even though we know he's a red pill grifter. So <laughs> wait a fucking minute. This crypto scammer, Sus Marquad, is okay. He's somehow good, okay? But we're going to target Pearl for some reason. They're all bad. Just, just say it. Just say the truth. You think they're all bad, okay? Stop sitting here choosing one after the other. We know exactly what you're doing. You're trying to separate these guys or ruin their collab or partnership from your, your, your behind the screen over there. It's not going to work, okay? Myron clearly has a plan dealing with Pearl. And I, I, we were surprised. Chat, we were surprised because we couldn't – we thought – Myron collabing with Pearl, that's no way. It doesn't fit the MO. But when we saw that collab happen, we were shocked. <laughs> and I'm assuming Rolo was probably shocked too. But to sit there and act like, oh, yeah, you know, one person's good and not a, uh, a perfect representative of the red pill. But the other person over here, it's a clear grifter. <laughs> yeah, you need to put all these other bozos in the same boat, especially Sus Marquand, okay? The, the, this couch pattern, suit wearing douchebag over here that thinks he's some kind of internet pimp. Yeah, get rid of him. Him, okay, if 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 Roll Tomasi doesn't condemn this guy, okay, if he doesn't condemn this loser right over here, but then wants to go ahead and go after Pearl, you're fucking crazy, bro. And it, it, your hypocrisy is just all over the place. Cocktail hour with Catrice with the five shout out to you. Says just tuning in, but it seems like Grandma Tomasi seems bitter. <laughs> they haven't called him for an interview. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what's going on. This dude is a bro, that's crazy. Like, this dude is hating so hard right now. It's not even funny. I'm actually shocked the level of hating I'm seeing from Rolo right now. One more time, man. That's what you're associating yourself with. If you're associating with her, you're associating with a Ben. You're associating with a naive Damn. deer in the headlights, cow eyed Damn. wonderment, doesn't know what the fuck is going on. Damn. But she's more than happy to go and have her name be the representative. Oh, shit. Doesn't know what's happening. End of story. Let me get back to these. What do we got here? Hi, King. Uh, keep the camera. Keep the camera this way. Do you like this way? We got the two. I'm gonna we're gonna work in it. Hey, hold on. Third hold one. Hold on. Banji, I gotta put your I gotta put your super chat away. Hold up. <laughs> Shout out to you. Says that FBI score had them second guessing everything, bro. When it came out that all these guys are getting investigated, they were all cleaning house. Maybe except for Rolo. Let me see what this person says. Shout out to you, Banji, with the super chat. By the way, this person says, "Hi, King Rolo." Keep the camera this way. Love your work. Yo, pause. <laughs> yo, yo, chat. Remember, chat. Remember, I told you the red pill is like OnlyFans for men, right? <laughs> you know, these influencers, they pay, or, or, or no, no, they, they sit there and get paid by these guys, you know, just the, like eye candy, like for the women, right? <laughs> Look at the high king Rolo. Keep the camera this way, okay? Love your work. He trying to see all of you, Rolo. <laughs> he want to see everything. <laughs> Y'all are some zesty weirdos, bro. <laughs> Y'all hate women so much, but love, love the physicality of a man, especially this grandma over here. This, this is what y'all pay for, really? King Rolo? Let me not find out anyone y'all in this chat calling any one of these pill-popping influencers king out here, all right? That is just the zestiest thing I have ever heard in my life, King Rolo. Get the fuck out of here. Wait, wait, go that, go that one. There you go. All right, see? This is much better. I, you know I like this one? Because I can do this. <laughs> Swallow oh, let me building. get my hair. Ah, yeah. Chat! Yo, Chet, he's literally flexing. He's flexing for these dudes. <laughs> he's flexing for these incels, bro. <laughs> Yo, is this what y'all pay for? Huh? This, this is what y'all pay for right here. All oh, the super chat. Oh, yeah, Rolo. You gotta you gotta keep the camera this way. Oh, you like this? Uh, how about I, I do this real here? How about I hit you with this one real quick? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a zesty ass minute, my dog. Is this what y'all red pill niggas get now? <laughs> y'all spent three hour live stream just to watch an old man flex in front of y'all. Is this what? <laughs> 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 oh my god, bro! I can't believe the too much chest, too much chest. Ah! Oh my yo, Chad! I can't do this, bro! I can't do this. I can't do this no more. With my with my big foot top. <laughs> I knew y'all was zesty, bro. I didn't know it was this bad. <laughs> Look at him. 
Yeah, yeah, you like, oh, y'all like this? Uh, this what this what y'all came to see, huh? <laughs> look, look at this. Uh, let me hang. <laughs> This guy says, "Hi, King Rolo. Keep the camera this way." Oh, hold up. <laughs> Let me. <laughs> ah, ah, shit. Oh, oh, hold up, chat. My stomach hurt. I'm, I'm gonna just play. I need a break. I'm gonna play the video. My stomach hurt. <laughs> uh, wow, Rolo's really young. You know, you know what gets me, Kyle? Is like, I like, go to this camera right here, quick. My when I'm doing my regular show and I'm in Reno, I'm only like yeah. maybe from here to here. And so people go, "Oh, he's a manly." <laughs> now go here. And then they go, whoa, what happened? He must be on TRT. He must be on gear. He must be on his shoulders. Are What's he doing? Oh, uh, he's working out with Hida Yamagishi. <laughs> Bro, you look like you're on gear, dog. <laughs> Yo, this man. <laughs> is, is that what people are sitting around wondering? Oh, my God, Rolo. How'd you get so big? Oh, my God. We thought you were a man lit before, but oh, my God, you're so buff, Rolo. <laughs> can, you, can you keep the camera this way, King? Yes, King Slay. <laughs> I can't do this, bro. These guys, these guys are crazy. They're absolutely. I told you, they are basically wannabe OnlyFans models. This is what this is what you probably would see on OnlyFans too. Chat, <laughs> what it right? Hey, let me pay you to look this way. Can you turn the camera this way? How about you do this? <laughs> now flick the beanie a little bit. <laughs> Yo, this is so zesty, bro. I'm sorry, chat. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is too damn much, bro. Let's continue. Oh. Can I? Can I please just own this, please? <laughs> can I? One thing. Just give me one thing. You can. You can give me shit about anything else. Just don't give me shit about this. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Rolo. Last week, I was thinking about your parents on the Doctor Phil show. King Phil says, she says, are those sweaty armpits? Probably. <laughs> Probably, dog. It's, this is just odd. This is very odd to me. I didn't know I would flip through a Rolo channel and watch him flex in front of a bunch of uh, young men. Is it he over here flexing in front of these dudes, bro? This is an odd situation to be in. And I was thinking that, man, this Rolo carried this kid and was doing a one versus five. Yeah, it kind of worked out that way, didn't I? Yeah, it's funny you said that one versus five. So let me see. <laughs> Richard, Imran, Dr. Phil, uh, Mar but Marilyn was kind of like on my side. Um, and then Robin, Robin McGraw. Oh boy. Yeah. I really want to be able to like do, I, I know I couldn't probably monetize it, but I would really like to be able to do a sort of play by play step by step through, through these, through that episode. So I give you guys an idea of what I was thinking of. Uh, it feels just like when they brought Marilyn Manson to the talk show to blame him about everything. Yeah. Shaking my head. This is well known. Yeah. Well, that's, I'm, thank you for saying that because this dynamic, the tilling the field dynamic is not anything new. It's been, it's been going this way. See, you gave me that fucking that fucking muffin before we came out here. <laughs> um, but it's been going on this way for a long. I mean, this is, it's a it's a proven formula. It's it's talk show formula is what it is. Since Maury Povich, Sally Jesse Raphael, remember her? Sally Jesse Raphael, uh, Phil Donahue, uh, Oprah Winfrey, right? I mean, come on, it's the same. Like, let's get these people in here and ridicule them because it's easy to ridicule them. It's our platform. We can say whatever the fuck we want. Oh, and by the way, sign this NDA so you can't say jack shit. Bro, you guys ridicule yourselves. It, it's not them purposely trying. Again, this is them not taking accountability for the bullshit they put out there. It's your talking points. It's your videos that they're seeing. So when you come in here, it's not them taking you out of context or trying to make you be look bad or anything like that. It's your own bozo ideas that make you all look stupid I, like you trying to shift this on anybody else it's just it's just very very telling okay because uh i'm sorry nobody told myron to go out there on these shows uh, uh like especially the uh flagrant two talking about yeah if she's so much as to have an instagram account she is for the streets so you gotta dump her right myron says that unprovoked that is his talking point so when people in real life sit there and look at it and say ah wait a minute that doesn't make any sense, all right? There are plenty of people who are dating that got Instagram accounts, and just because you have an Instagram account doesn't make you an automatic te uh, cheater or brand you as such. So where do you even come up with this crazy bro science scenario, right? And blah, 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 blah. they don't know. That's why they get roasted. They get roasted by every other podcast they go on that is outside of this pill-popping space. Is because it's not that those people are trying to make them look bad. It's the talking points that don't make any sense, okay? When Myra's sitting here trying to give relationships advice, talking about you need to have sex with at least 50 women before you can get into a, a, a serious relationship. He said that on the Fragrant uh, 2 podcast. He said that. And Andrew Schultz was like, yo, what? How many relationships have you been in? Serious relationship. Myra's only been in one. 
And that was in high school before he met this uh, new girl he's dating, right? So this guy's been in one relationship but has the balls to try to lecture you thinking, hey, you got to sleep with 50 girls before you get into one so you know exactly how to differentiate between a hoe and a housewife. It's like, bro, I'm sorry, but if you're out here sleeping with 50-plus women and that's your main goal, uh, being a gigolo is not going to make you a good husband. <laughs> or a judge of character. <laughs> I mean, jeez, bro. Like these guys are just all around, just just bad, <laughs> just bad. But um, more deep with the five. More deep says, uh, Duke. A few weeks ago, Ethan ba uh, Ethan Klein. Oh, a few weeks back, bro. My dyslexia is crazy, bro. A few weeks back, Ethan Klein and Jesse Lee Peterson uh, uh had Jesse Lee Peterson on, and Ethan exposed JLP and. Had, had homosexual relationships with several men. Plan on covering that. We covered that a long time ago, I think. But I, I don't know if – I didn't know Ethan covered it. So I might have to check what Ethan uh, Ethan Klein's uh, point of view was. Because, listen, I like the roast he did on Fresh and Fit. He, he did absolutely a great job with that roast thing, okay, or that debate. So I might have to check out what he did with uh, Jesse Lee Peterson because, yeah, that was some sus shit. We covered that. <laughs> and, and a lot of it – a lot of uh, – I had no idea we had a lot of uh, uh, Jordan Lee Peterson fans or Jesse Lee Peterson fans in our chat. But, like, they got mad at us. <laughs> so I'm like, how y'all getting mad at us? There's a bunch of people saying he, he did something to them. All right, and there's there's serious allegations of it. Why y'all getting mad at me for reporting the news? It's Jesse Lee Peterson. Listen, I told y'all to be very skeptical of the of the, the super anti homosexuality types. Okay, those are the people who are if they go gung ho into oh that's gay and oh uh, you shouldn't be a homosexual because the Lord the Lord said so. You better watch them. You better watch them because oftentimes they talk about their demons, okay? They're not talking about the demons of other people. They talk about the demons within themselves that they can't reconcile with. That's why I always found this sketch when these overzealous preachers are sitting there. Yeah, it's against the Bible. It's all right, fine, bro, because like most people who are straight, we don't give a fuck. I'm sorry, bro, but uh, most straight dudes out here, we're not out here worried about what gay dudes are doing. I'm, I'm, I'm just... I'm just being real with you. It's not a thing we're sitting there thinking, oh, man, these gay people. Oh, my God, they're ruining society. No one cares. If you're straight, you don't care. You care about your life because that's what everyone cares about. It's their fucking lives, okay? So when you meet someone who cares about something, especially that, the opposite sex, way more, you got to watch them because they're probably on some sus activities. And the way Jesse Lee Peterson has been speaking against homosexuality is one of those things where you just like, mm, this guy's probably in the closet. And lo and behold, <laughs> I mean, come on, lo and behold, dude. Again, it's just one of those things. I'm very skeptical of that. Simple as that. Um, what you got? Here, uh, Rolo, now that Dr. Phil is on a publicity tour for his new network, he is definitely using some of your talking points. Yeah, I know. <laughs> a 180 degree turnaround from your, uh, your appearance on his show. The, the grift is real. Yeah, because they know that it plays. They know that whatever they want to bastardize the red pill to be, they know that it plays. They don't want to talk to me because they talk to me. I'm too real for them. Like when I was on the show, like everybody, I, I can't think of anybody who didn't think that, that my parents on Dr. Phil, even the people who hate my guts said, you know, he did a pretty good job on that show. And bro, what, what you couldn't even ba understand a basic concept on the show. Everyone was like, is this guy an idiot? Maybe the beanie's too damn tight. <laughs> no one at any point thought you were killing it on this show. Okay. You probably did worse than Ben. What are you talking about? Because I was prepared. I knew what I was walking into. I knew. I Put it this way. You guys probably don't remember this, but maybe there's a few of you that do. Do y'all remember when uh, Roosh V um, went on the Dr. Oz show? You guys remember that? Some, there's got to be somebody in the, in the chat that remembers that, oh, that appearance. They made Roosh look like hell. He was there to get pilloried. He was there to be the whipping boy. And it was about fat fat shaming, I think. He was like, he's supposed, I'm like, here's the number one most like famous like PUA on planet earth. And they bring him in as like the king of all fat shaming. <laughs> He's, there's so much more to Roosh than this. What the fuck are you doing? And then Roosh tried to play it off as if he got ambushed going in there. Right? I didn't know they were going to talk about this. I didn't know that these fat chicks were going to be there and going to like shame me and ridicule me. Right. And of course it was supposed to be like, it was funny because like by the end of the show, he's supposed to like sort of be like this re reforms, like fat shamer. <laughs> and, uh, and so I remember watching this and then, it, it, it was really kind of played really bad for Roosh. And this is 2015, remember? And um, and so what Roosh did is, he's, you know, because he was running uh, Return of Kings. This is back when he was like a PUA, right? And uh, he wrote this article, something about like how he didn't know he was going to get ambushed or whatever. And then it, it struck me. I remembered there was about a year before he had written this. Um, he'd written this essay called uh, Dr. Oz is Full of Shit and his wife runs his show. So I went back through the archives on uh, the Roosh V blog. And I, I think I went through the Roosh V forum too. And I found it. And I put it, I said, dude, 
you can say you got you made a bad choice. That's fine. Like I'm, I would be happy to forgive you, but don't say you didn't know what you were walking into. You already were writing about this a year ago. You knew goddamn well what you were getting into. Don't try to like soft sell this as some sort of ambush tactic on the part of Dr. Oz when you knew goddamn well what was going on. I hope the payoff was good. I don't know how much if you made any money off of it or whatever the fuck it was. But it was right after that that he decided to go on his tour. Okay. The tour was to promote a book called Free Speech Isn't Free. Now, this is a pickup artist. The most notorious pickup artist known for writing lay guides like Bang Poland, Bang Estonia, Bang uh, the Dead Bat in Paraguay, right? That's uh, one of his first ones. Like basically, they're lay guides, right? But you want everyone to sort of take you seriously as a free speech proponent. And by the way, he wasn't the only one that was doing this. Jack Murphy, when he wrote De uh, Democrats are Deplorable, same thing, cashed in on that grift. When was that? The election cycle of 2016. When did he get like run up the flagpole and get like canceled? The election cycle of 2016. Why? Because he pivoted from red pill into politics. Same thing with Rush V. Pivoted, or tried to, because he really, everybody wanted to be Milo Yiannopoulos in, in 2015, 2016. Nobody fucking remembers that. The kids don't fucking remember that, and they don't even fucking care. But that's the cycle, and that's where we're at right now. And that's why you will see all of these red pill shows pivoting into politics, pivoting into social issues, pivoting into religion, pivoting into anything but the red pill. And by 2025, right back around again. Guaranteed. Come right back to, come back to home. Welcome to the club, Rolo. We've been saying this thing the whole time. <laughs> we, I mean, chat, y'all know we've already been on top of it. It's, it, it's not that, it's not that far fetched, okay, to think that y'all, y'all, you, you guys just don't have any common sense whatsoever. But we saw this coming. We saw the grift from a mile away, bro. We knew you guys were gonna jump in the politics and go Republican full blown. All right, we saw this coming, but now Rolo has a Rolo starting to see the light, and now he has a problem with this. <laughs> so why, why you get mad, bro? Yo, Banji baby, what the five? Shout out to you. He says uh, they tell on themselves. Those insecurities scream. I have no clue about women or dating. Yo, that is facts. These these guys again they project so much it's hilarious right because you can absolutely tell when they're projecting on people and rollo does it a lot he's over here projecting on this ben guy and it's like bro you're a ben too bro if you're gonna sit there and call pearl a ben and all these other people bends what about you <laughs> you donovan sharp most definitely is a ben <laughs> i don't know about y'all but donovan sharp is a ben to me bro the guy that sits there on pearl davis's show and calls his own mother a whore okay that guy sounds like a ben to me a pretty dopey one at best so what listen I, I find it interesting that rollo's willing to call out everybody else that he doesn't like even people outside of his own camp or in his camp right but you're not willing to call out obvious ones like uh donovan sharp or MLD, if anything, I think MLD is a pretty big bend to me. <laughs> I mean, the way he got roasted by Saint the Sinner, you know, the same bozo you're doing podcasts with right now, uh, with Fresh and Fit, I thought you, MLD, were friends. Y'all were part of Rule Zero, right? So all of a sudden, you're going to be friends with a guy that roasted your buddy MLD, but then have the balls to get mad at Fresh and Fit or Myron for collabing with Pearl are you like what do you oh my god it's like these guys they don't they don't they don't see their own bullshit that's what it seems like to me get back to my roots man i feel like i got away from them yeah you're getting away from them and they're making fun of you and they're ridiculing so, you uh, pink pill so the ben is this the smarmy guy that was on dr phil before he went on dr phil i wonder if he this guy right here hold up this, this guy right here that that's ben this this pointy headed guy right over here with the glasses that looks like he could be Rolo's nephew. This guy, I mean, they look alike. Yo, chat, look at this guy, look at this guy, and look at Rolo. They look like they're they're, they're related somehow, right? I don't know why Rolo's trying to make fun of him, bro. <laughs> I mean, it seems like he, he's if you put a beanie on, if he put a beanie on him, and then maybe like have him grow out the bottom half of his hair, that could be Rolo's son. That could be Rolo's long lost son. So uh, if y'all wondering who Ben is, that's him. <laughs> he, he's the guy who, believe it or not, this guy sells courses. He makes money selling courses to incels online, uh, basically on how to improve their lives to get women. And for some incels, it's working. So it goes to show you what uh, what Banji Baby was talking about, right? They, they, they're insecure. It's usually the hurt people that are out here giving advice to other people. It don't even make sense. <laughs> but if it all y'all wondering, that that was Ben, Rolo's uh, long-lost nephew over there. Same time, because you're more useful to them being the butt of a joke than you are actually educating people and doing something and holding other people accountable. The same people who have been giving us shit in the red pill for ages. Now we're just going to fucking be good with it.
because it's a pivot because it's it makes good brand sense. It makes good sense to, as, as a hustle. It makes good. Hey, man, it's just business. You know how many times I've heard it's just business? I've been like I said, I've been doing this for 22 some odd years. I remember hearing that back in 2012, man. It's just business. I wrote an essay um, oh my God. called False Positives that's, that's in 2019. Cool. This was right before all the shit went down with, An with, with Anthony Johnson. Why did I have a problem with that? Why did I should say that? Why did Anthony Johnson have a problem with Rolo Tomasi? Because he wanted to. For Witty and Slip, why did I have a problem with Anthony Johnson? Oh, oh, why did Anthony Johnson have a problem with me? <laughs> Hold on. Let me, let me play that back. Called False Positives in 2019. This was right before all the shit went down with, An with, with Anthony Johnson. Why did I have a problem with that? Why did I should say that? Why did Anthony Johnson have a problem with Rolo Tomasi? Because he wanted to pivot off into politics. That's why he hasn't taken off that fucking MAGA hat in since 2018. Since 2018, 2019. That's why he's making ones that say, you know, make women great again or whatever the fuck it's it is, you know, come to the 21 convention, whatever the fuck, right? He hasn't taken that. I seriously think he probably fucking showers in that goddamn thing. Still wearing it today. Still Bro, today. Rolo! Are, are you serious? We can say the same thing about your beanie. <laughs> you always wear a beanie, bro. Like, who sits there? Yo, you're on Dr. Phil with a beanie on, wearing a fucking shirt and a blazer on, okay? That's not even a good fit. So, we, we're at, at this point, we're sure you you probably shower in your beanie. But then you sit there and say, well, Anthony Johnson, okay? I mean, he's, since his pivot into politics, okay? I mean... He's never been the same. He even got that same hat. Make women great again. I mean, can you believe it? I bet he never takes his hat off. Huh. <laughs> I mean, what a weirdo. <laughs> a guy who never takes his hat off. And, and just, I bet he showers in his hat, huh? <laughs> it's like, bro, Rolo. <laughs> Brad, Brad, you and Tim Pool are practically brothers when it comes to the bitty gang. All right? What do we... What do I don't know if I can endure chat. I don't know if I can do this. I, 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 I'm going to just be real with you. This, hey, this, this, I can't endure this, bro. I don't know if I can do it. This is crazy. Like, Rolo, really, bro? You sit here making fun of somebody else for wearing a hat for too long. Really, Rolo? You of all people. Again, it's like these guys, they can't see their own hypocrisy, bro. Uh, Rolo, come on. Really? Like, you will never. You know who you're talking to because you got to see that red MAGA hat. Like, when does it come off, man? When do, when do we like have a moment of clarity? Like, it's like a drunk and you're hoping for the drunk to have a moment of clarity and just never come. <laughs> what it's the same fucking thing. Doing? In 2019, the reason why Jack Murphy, uh, Tanner Guzzi, uh, Alexander Cortez, uh, I'm trying to think who else was on. Oh, well, Jack Murphy was part of that whole thing. Uh, Socrates, all these people at the fireside, the fireside chat, all these guys who are now long gone, whose names you don't even remember. Well, maybe you remember Jack Murphy's. Um, long gone. Poof. Bye. Like a fart in the fucking wind. Right. But the reason why they had a problem. is sitting here. And talking about, oh, Jack Murphy. <laughs> I knew he was going to be terrible. And for those of you who don't know, Jack Murphy is the guy who, uh, he's a 69 for 69, but he was that guy who was grifting off of Tim Pool for a while. But he's got that weird skunk beard. Hold up. I think I have a picture of him. Oh, I do have a photo. Look at this. Oh, my God. It's like it's like they all come together here. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, I don't know who the guy is with the long hair, uh, with the purple shirt on. I don't know who that is. All right, but what I do know is the guy right there in the beanie. All right, that beanie is very recognizable because the guy who wears it never takes it off. And and guess who he is smiling, buddy buddies with over here? The same guy who he's desperately trying to distance himself from, uh, Jack. Murphy. Oh, now isn't that interesting, right? You sit here talking about, oh yeah, I'm glad I wasn't part of the whole Jack Murphy fiasco. But look at you here, y'all are bad, damn near best friends, right? So again, uh, stop playing, dog. We know exactly what game you're on. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, Jack Murphy, he's the uh, 69 for 69 guy. All right. And for those who don't know, he does. Pre <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I clicked the wrong button. He practically does OnlyFans for um for uh for like weirdos, bro. He he does OnlyFans where he pay you pay him and he'll put whatever up his ass. I shit you not, Jack Murphy, the guy who is super, you know, red pill and super masculine and super, you know, anti, you know, weirdness, right? You know how these, you know, like I tell you, like the, these preachers, this anti-gay preachers, right? When they get super go, they go super hard against gay people, right? Right. And same thing with Jack Murphy, right? In the red pill, oh yeah, you, you gotta be masculine. 
All right, you got to be mad. Hold on, I'm trying to see if I can find that video. Y'all got to see what I'm talking about. It practically ruined his career, right? But uh, hold up, I think I have that video somewhere, right? But when that video came out, everybody knew Jack Murphy wasn't the masculine man he tries to pretend to be, okay? We all knew who Jack Murphy really was. He, you pay him $69, he'll put anything up his ass. Hold up, do I have that video? Hold up, Jack. <laughs> it's crazy. No, I'm not going to show you the actual video of him sticking shit up his ass, but it, it's clearly him. It's clearly him in the video. Uh, oh, I don't think. Oh, I got it. Here we go. I got a chat right here. 69 guys. 69 for 69. Yes, I have definitely fucked guys before. Oh, I'm a hetero flexible. <laughs> I should put that in the bio. You should. Yeah, everyone asks. Everyone asks. Yeah. All guys want to know. <laughs> We love our guy fans. Uh, I especially love Danny fans. 69 for 69, guys. Oh. Oh. 69 for 69. 69 for 69. <laughs> hey, these, hey, all of these guys here want to teach you about masculinity. Come on, huh? They want to tell you how to be a man. 69 for 69. You pay him $69, he'll show you how to really be a man. <laughs> you heard of me. Yeah, he's done guys before. So, hey, listen, they're going to be no problem. 69 for 69. All your dreams going to come true, dog. <laughs> but Jack Murphy, he was that guy. Masculine man, right? Grifting off uh, off this uh, red pill shit, right? All of a sudden, yeah, it turns out he likes it up the butthole too. Uh, I, I won't be surprised. That, listen, I told you, these, these pill popping guys are sus. I'm not joking when we say this, bro. A lot of these guys, you see how angry they get when it comes to women, all right? It's because they probably are feeling something, okay? They're, they're not secure in their own sexuality, and it's for a reason, okay? But I'm going to let you know right now, the guy that Rolo is desperately shaming, okay, the Jack Murphy guy, y'all were best buds, okay? So as far as I know, you probably knew back then he was stuffing shit up his ass, okay? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. But um, this picture definitely speaks a thousand words, Rolo. You look excited to be near him, okay? So shut up problem with me back in 2019 is the exact same reason everybody has a problem with Rolo right now except they took it they took it a fucking to the the next step to the more, the more autistic aspergery step so right now we are at a point in i don't know red pill history again where we just come right back around to 2019 well, 2020 somewhere around there probably would have happened in 2020 had it not been for c19 but that being what it is, that's exactly what the, what the vision was for the 21 convention. We're, we're going to get Jesse Lee Peterson in here. We're going to get Matt, Matt's, or Mike Cernovich. We're going to get uh, was, uh, Stefan Molyneux is going to come in here. Donovan Sharp, you know goddamn well what I'm talking about, too, because you were there. And you're like, how come Rolo doesn't want to take pictures with or want to take pictures with uh, Mike Cernovich and, and Stefan Molyneux? You know why? Because Pat Campbell said, don't take pictures with those guys. Don't have that in the, don't have that in the backfield somewhere where people can go and get those pictures and like say that you are at the same convention with him. This is because I will guarantee you that in the future you will be glad that you did it. And you know what? God rest his eternal soul. Pat was fucking right. Bro, you have a picture with these niggas right here. It's too late for any of that, bro. Like, what are you talking about? Get out of here. And I'm fucking right right now. Oh, and you know I'm fucking right. You can say, well, it's just business. It's just this. It's like, okay, that's fine. You're not a, just here's the thing. Just admit that you're not about it anymore. Just admit that you do. You, you, it's not a. It's not a thing. Just admit that your business and your hustle is more important than the, than the mission ever was, than the principle ever was. I've been principal. I've been I've been doing exactly the same thing since 2012, since 20, 2006, really 2004, since the so suave days. Fuck, I still I still lurk on so suave occasionally. I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip there. I don't, 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 don't want to get it close to here. <laughs> Help me out when Ned's uh, medical bills came down, and I said, "Just hold off on that. Let's see what I can get from the from the homeowners insurance before we get too deep in the woods there." But that was right about the time that uh, that Thor had his um, his uh, uh, tumor removal, and so everybody was doing the the uh, the fundraiser. I didn't participate in that because I didn't like the fact that everybody was dealing with uh, Pearl, Ben, whoever, because essentially what she's trying to do is buy off other people's sympathies, and you're not going to buy my sympathies. But Whoa, I thought Buddy was your friend. So you didn't join a fundraising stream for your buddy who clearly has health issues because it was being done by Pearl. How petty can you be? That, who cares if it's about Pearl? It's for your mans, dog. Like, it's for your boy. It shouldn't be about, be about him. 
So you're that petty, Rolo, that you're saying, oh, you know what? I can't. Oh, they're doing a fundraiser to help you with your your health ailments. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I would help you. But that bitch Pearl is there. And I don't want to be anywhere associated with her. OK, she's such a bitch. I know you're my best friend and I care about you so much, but I'm sorry, bro. I don't care about you that much to just sit there and do a get well fundraiser with that freaking woman. She's a Ben. Did you know that? You should have known she was a Ben, dog. <laughs> it's like, this. imagine having this guy as your friend. He wouldn't show up to your funeral if Pearl was invited. Even if he was your best friend, <laughs> he's not going to show up because the person he doesn't like is there. It's like, bro, you're a grown-ass man. When you learn how to set your ego and pride aside and just do something for the love of your friend. I mean, you only have one life to live with them. I don't believe in the afterlife or any of that shit. But for those of you guys who do, fine. At least spend this life with the person you know in the form that you will know them for the existing period you have them. All right? Because it's not going to last forever. So if they're sick and someone as evil as Pearl, even though they're friends, Pearl's friends with them, says, hey, I want to put a stream together to at least fundraise to help with your ailments. Right? Show up. Be part of it so you can say, hey, I was there. Share that moment with them. But now, if something were to happen to this guy, nothing's there. Yeah, but I did it on the back end. Who fucking cares? Right? Now your fans are seeing this shit and saying, oh, <laughs> Rolo. <laughs> right? But when he was alive, you didn't want to do anything because Pearl was there. How petty was that? When people look back at that, if something, let's say something happens to him, right? And people look back on that, they're going to not remember you fondly. You can say, hey, I have a legitimate reason. Pearl's a grifter. It doesn't matter. To them, they're going to see Pearl as a good person for at least, you know, trying to help a person in need versus you, you know, over here, you know, playing these weird high school games. I mean, come on, bro. That's your that's supposed to be your friend. I, I, can you be that? How petty can you be, bro? This is crazy. Like, imagine having this guy as a friend. I don't care. So I'm working with Trader SZ right now. We're gonna, I'm going to see about getting him a sizable donation for his medical bills. And I said, don't give it to me. Give it to Thor. So um, we're working on that right now. It's like it's a crypto thing because he's waiting for like, I don't know, I don't know how he does his crypto or whatever, but uh, that's how we're working it out right now. And I've already contacted Thor about this, so he knows. But Because uh, people kept asking, how come you weren't on that show? Well, because I don't have anything to do with Pearl. Um, simply because she's just doing it to buy sympathies. It's, it's really? each... Do you think that's how the fans are going to remember that? You really think that's how the fans are going to remember that? Really? Huh? That, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. He Rolo definitely didn't go on that show because, you know, Pearl was being, uh, you know, fake. And Pearl was obviously a grifter. No! That's why they're bugging you right now. Like, yo, Rolo, why weren't you on that stream? That was your friend, right? Let's say something happens to that guy right now. People are going to watch that stream and they're going to see you missing, right? And they're going to say, oh, well, was Rolo really his friend or was Rolo just faking, right? They're not going to care about the issue you and Pearl have because compared to the death of your friend, that shit was just so petty, right? Matter of fact, they will hate you when they look back at this. It's kind of like how we view Donnie Boy right now where he's – you know how when he played that video talking about I, I, Kevin Samuels wasn't really my friend? <laughs> I thought we were friends, but Kevin Samuels, he didn't – he told me he couldn't swim with me, Jack. And – it was all because he didn't let me roast O'Shea. He didn't let me roast O'Shea Duke Jackson. And now, and now Kevin Samuels and I are friends. And he said, listen, he said, Donnie boy, he said that Kevin Samuels stopped being friends with him when Kevin Samuels was at 100,000 subscribers. Now, Donovan Sharp has been grifting off of Kevin Samuels' video all the way till Kevin Samuels went past a million subs. Think about that. They stopped being cool with each other back when Kevin Samuels was at 100,000 subscribers. But Donnie Boy rolled this nigga's clout, made us all believe that him and Kevin Samuels were cool up until Kevin Samuels died. And then when Kevin Samuels died, all of a sudden, Donnie Boy comes out and says, well, yeah, you know, Kevin Samuels isn't really my friend. All right, he he stopped being friends with me about a hundred thousand subscribers ago, but I, I I wanted to pretend that we were still friends because I didn't want you guys to be mad at him. It's like, bro, what? No, now we're looking at it. You look fake as fuck. If Kevin Samuels was fake to you back then, you should have been honest when he was alive. More people would have respected you for going against the grain and saying, "Hey, y'all are worshiping Kevin Samuels, but Kevin Samuels was fake." Because look what he's doing to me behind the scenes. People would have respected you then. Yeah, maybe people would have been mad at you, and they would have probably been angry at you 
from the get-go. But later on, they'll probably be like, okay, I understand where Donovan Sharp was coming from, right? But you, Donovan Sharp, rode his clout, Kevin Samuels' clout, all the way up until he died, past a million views. All right, and then you're gonna turn around and drop a video after he's dead, saying, "Yeah, me and Kevin weren't really friends. Yeah, I just we just weren't friends, <laughs> bro." That's why people hate Donovan Sharp right now. They hate him because they think he's fake. They think he was a fake friend to Kevin Samuels because he pretended to be his friend this whole time. Again, when people look back on this Rolo, they're not gonna look upon you favorably. Just saying, learn from your buddy uh, Donnie Boy over here because his channel is pretty much done. So. <laughs> he's an NFL sportscaster now, right? No, no more red pill, okay? You're going down the same path, buddy. You got to remember that it's not it's not charity with her. It's like buying a chip. And I wasn't going to participate in her buying a chip. So, uh, But before we get into that, where do we go? Um, did you guys see this? Now we're looking at Candace Owens here. Now people are going to say, well, um, what about... Uh, what about Myron and Fresh and Candace? Well, we're not going to talk about Myron and Fresh. We're going to talk about it. Can't, but we are going to talk about Candace. You're 30. How old are you? You're 35. There we old. go. Oh, okay, man. So what, what are you? What is that? Here's where the real. Here's oh, where the God. real. Hold on. Sorry about that, Kyle. Here's where the real conversation took place. I liked. I, I watched. I'll give you the. Here's my review. Okay. My completely try to be as non judgmental, non biased review that I can possibly give you here. <laughs> Yo, bitch. Um, not to take anything away from Myron Fresh. They did a really good job. I think the uh, the interview was good, but it wasn't what I think it was less than what I was hoping for. Um, you got to remember that this is the same woman who jumped into the whole mix when Stephen Crowder and Hillary Crowder were going through their divorce. And this is the woman that Stephen Crowder, who Myron Fresh have been on his show before. Um, this is the woman who who knew about the videotape, sat on the videotape, and Stephen Crowder said she is blackmailing him. Where was that? That would have been one one of many simple questions that could have been asked. Yo, you know what? As much as we're clowning Rolo right now, this is a valid point. Because uh, 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 Stephen Crowder did have Fresh and Fit on their show. We remember that, right? We actually reacted to an episode they did. All right? And... Apparently, Myron has a spiel about loyalty, right? Oh, I'm loyalty to this and whatnot, right? So here's Rolo admitting that, yo, Myron must have probably known that Candace was sitting on these tapes, and then she was playing these stinkish games until it was convenient for her to expose Crowder. And it's not fair to Crowder, especially if Fresh and Fitter there, and they have the opportunity to ask Candace Owens why she did what she did, but they didn't do it. Because we reacted to Candace Owens being on Fresh and Fit, Jack. We were there, all right? But we didn't see Myron. It seemed like Myron was too busy getting exposed for, uh, you know, the whole sugar baby uh, seeking arrangement bullshit, right? But he didn't call out Candace Owens. None of them are calling out Candace Owens, okay? So that is a point. You know, that, that that's a fair point. So if that is true, which we're seeing that it is, because Rolo's pointing it out now, um, does that mean Myron is still uh, uh, one of these uh, loyal friends? as he likes to put it. What about MLD? I keep saying this, but I think we almost, we, we forgot about the Mr. Endure guy, right? I thought MLD, Roll Tomasi, Fresh and Fit are all supposed to be friends, right? So then why are they all hanging out with Saint the Sinner? The guy who basically did the same dirty tricks this guy, Roll Tomasi, is accusing Candace Owens for doing to Stephen Carter. Because uh, Saint the Sinner did those, pull those dirty tricks on MLD, and tried to make MLD look bad. Matter of fact, he damn near made MLD, MLD cry. And was, was, what was worse is that St. the Sinner did that when MLD was at his lowest. He was getting roasted by damn near everybody on the internet. He walked off of a, a show with Angela. Shout out to her because Angela exposed the hell out of him because she called him out to his face. All right, so MLD was having a bad week, and St. the Sinner decided to pile on to make it look work for, worse for clout. But... He's cool to do podcasts with you, Roll Tomasi, and Myron and Fresh and Fit. But somehow, I mean, I'm, I, the reason I'm pointing this out is you guys got to see the hypocrisy that goes on with these people. It's just out, it's just out of nowhere, bro. It's like this is crazy. But uh, shout out to Benji Baby says, have some respect that Beanie has been through two world wars and Vietnam. <laughs> Yo, know, I, I, I listen, this Beanie has been with Rolo since. He was born with this shit. He came out his mama's belly with that beanie on. Okay, that that thing. Okay, is is a part of Rolo, 
as, as Rolo's uh, books. Okay, it, it's it's him. Okay, it's part of his attire. We don't know Rolo without the beanie, bro. <laughs> stay gold, stay gold radio with the five shots. He says sixty nine dollars for Bussy Foundations. Yo, it says nah, dudes can't even think straight, but want to preach masculinity. Get roided out, cat. Get roided out, Caitlyn Jenner out of here. <laughs> yo, he does look like roided Caitlyn Jenner. But yo, yo, stay gold. This is what we talk about, right? A lot of these pill popping guys, uh, especially these guys who ride the conservative wave. This is probably what they do behind the scenes, right? They probably do like stuff being stuck up their butts, right? It's probably listen. It, it's the most wannabe masculine dudes that probably are on this sus shit, right? And the problem is not because they're doing the sus shit. Is the the problem is they're trying to lecture other people about how they should live their lives meanwhile behind closed doors this is what they do because think about it this is the shit that jack murphy was doing on the internet he was going around team pool uh tim pool's podcast talking about how men should be men men aren't men anymore uh yada 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 marry marriage this marriage that single family houses and all, all these different things right come to find out that this is him all, all along 69 guys 69 for 69 yes i have definitely fucked guys before oh like at this very moment, he's getting something shoved up his ass, bro. But for a long time, before other people knew this video existed, this bozo was allowed to lecture us men on how to be men. I'm sorry, bro, but I've never had anything stuck up my backside. I'm just saying, I can't vibe with you, dog. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what this is, but you can't tell me how to be a man. <laughs> I can't believe this guy was allowed to grift as a, a Manosphere leader for so long. Like, who let this thing? Like, no one checked this paperwork. No one knew this video was out there. huh? But we let, we let this guy, of all people, come in here, tell us how to be men. And then we wonder why our men aren't being men anymore. I'm starting to, I'm starting to, I'm starting to think that maybe it's not the liberal conditioning that's making the men soft. Maybe it's y'all niggas undercover, because I'm, I'm seeing this shit right now. And man, oh man, it is not making sense to me, bro. Okay, because they're all falling like flies. I'm just waiting on Myron to hit, all right? As soon as that dude, it hits that he's a, uh, what do you call it? He's one of these, because listen, the evidence is already coming out for Myron already. <laughs> the evidence, it's already out on display for my boy Myron, okay? So I'm just telling y'all, the moment the solid evidence hits on this clown, it, it, it's basically game over because <laughs> I'm telling y'all right now, one by one, these guys have serious, serious shit in their closet. All right. Don't let even get me started on this clown. But ass. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, wake up. OK, I think the Matrix is these red pill poppers trying to turn a bunch of young men out. That's what I think it is. Y'all, y'all, they trying to turn a bunch of young boys out. That's what I think it is. Y'all need to wake up. It's it's a this is an agenda. <laughs> this is the agenda, folks. Shout out to you, Stingo. Let's continue. <laughs> During that time. Well, what about the Stephen Crowder thing? Oh, well, let me tell you about that. And it just softballed it and moved on to the next topic, right? Okay, I know you want to play nice with them. I know you want to you know, people want to you know uh, build themselves up to maybe a, a spot on Matt Walsh, which I'm sure probably will happen. It'll probably be Pearl and Myron will be the next will be the next iteration of it because it ain't gonna be James Sexton. I can tell you that right now. Um, good news and bad news with Jim is Jim's not going to be doing the <laughs> Jim is not going to be doing the show with Matt Walsh and Pearl thank, and and Michael Knowles after using my name to get him on board. But they're playing it's it's monkey business and it's shenanigans and stuff. So he's also not going to be coming on with us either because and because he's just simply throwing up his hands in disgust. And I can't say as I blame blame Jim for that well, one bit. Um, so Jim is done with as far like according to the last email that I got from Jim. Uh, is that he just like, you know what? I'm just going to back up off of this stuff until I do Rogan or whatever, which is kind of what I told him in like August anyways. Like he, just coming on my show was sort of like risking it because uh, Joe Rogan calls my show and Fresh and Fit and whatever podcast and Pearl bottom, uh, quote unquote, bottom of the barrel podcasts. Uh, I That's because you guys are. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, Joe Rogan doesn't need OnlyFans stars to get views. You guys do don't want that for Jim because I think he's got a much better, broader, greater message than to be dealing with a Ben like Pearl. Um, and maybe not even with me, because if that's the way that Joe Rogan sees my show or Myron and Fresh or Access Vegas or whatever else, I'm, I'm kind of regrettably that's the way it is, I guess. But the reason why he thinks we're the bottom of the barrel is because we have too many fucking Bens that are making it ridiculous. And what happens is when James Sexton deals with a, per a Pearl, a Ben, 
it makes it look as if though he's slumming it, right? It makes it look as though his message or his his demeanor, his candor, his whatever whatever he's about is less serious than it probably should be. So he can get on Lex Friedman, he can get on Soft White Underbelly. He's been with he's been on Steve Harvey too, I think. Um, and like some pretty big names, right? He doesn't need to do my show. He doesn't. I'm glad to thank you, Jim, for doing it. I very much. Bro, this is crazy. <laughs> How bad do you want to be on Joe Rogan's right now without without trying to without trying to act like you don't want to be, bro? Listen, we know you want to be on Joe Rogan. You, you listen, chat. If y'all have uh, if y'all have been around Rolo, this isn't the first time he talks about going on Joe Rogan or even make slight uh, slight little comments about uh, Joe Rogan's podcast. Okay, if you've heard all the things he said about Joe Rogan, you could tell he wants to be on that show. All right, he wants to be the Red Pill representative going up and talking to Joe Rogan, but he knows he can't, okay? Because he doesn't have the star power anymore, okay? And realistically, who wants to have grandma sit there and talk to you about uh, women and dating and, and seduction? He looks like he's out of touch with that shit, okay? So uh, Joe Rogan's probably right to just, you know, uh, bypass these guys. But yeah, again, listen, you guys are bad products. All of you guys are bad products, okay? So uh, this shouldn't be surprised. I don't think anyone, uh, listen, Unless you want to completely tank your reputation, the last thing you want is to have demonetized clowns or de-partner clowns be on your show. I mean, let's just be real. Uh, it is what it is. And, 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 yo, we also know Fresh and Fit, Myron, that's a goal for you, too. It's not happening, okay? The moment you put that uh, Ku Klux Klan mask on doing Nazi salutes, okay, you pretty much killed your chances of even being on that show, all right? Because uh, he's not going to allow it. Just knowing how the, the media treats Rogan now, all right, if they see you on that show, they're going to bring up them clips of you wearing a KKK hoodie, all right, and doing Nazi salutes with Nick Quintez. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to use that and brand Joe Rogan as an alt-right psychopath <laughs> that just for just for collabing with myron congratulations bozos you played yourselves much appreciate that we're friends right but he doesn't need to do pearl he doesn't need to do myron and fresh he doesn't need to do any of this stuff and i told him i said just hold off from that until you do joe rogan until you do the biggest of the big and then like <laughs> then then start doing favors for people please but uh he's not going to do that he's not going to do daily wire he's not going to do pearl shit he's not going to do my shit so so it's i think if if there's anything like a, a, what, a pyrrhic victory like a pyrrhic victory where you where you have, uh, where you, you win the battle, but it costs you more than than you were really expecting to put out. I guess maybe that's it. But I can't say that I don't understand his perspective, and I would probably feel the same way because this isn't his world. This isn't what he's about. He doesn't know who Pearl is. He doesn't know who I am. Well, I mean, so I am, but he doesn't know who. He's not familiar okay, with the man. I, I, wait, what do you say about Pyrrhic victories? I don't think that's what it means. Of uh, where you, you, if there's anything like a a, what, a Pyrrhic victory, like a Pyrrhic victory, where you where you have. Uh, where you, you win the battle, but it costs you more than than you were really expecting to put out. I guess maybe that's it. Okay, but I can't I, say that I don't it, understand it. his perspective, and I would probably feel the same way because this isn't his world. This isn't what he's about. He doesn't know who Pearl is. He doesn't know who I am. Well, I mean, yes, I am, but he doesn't know who. He's not familiar with the Manosphere. He's not. He sure, sure doesn't know who Mac and Murphy is. He doesn't know <laughs> who the rest of these people are. So, oh, are we have low low battery. Oh, oh, that's you. Okay, I just saw that the, the alert come up. So there you go. However. I want to say this is I thought this was interesting because I know that Myron and Fresh really wanted to get Candace on there. Now he I talked with Myron afterwards and I, I took down that post, you know, because I kind of regretted putting it up there in the first place. No, Wait, I'll does anyone up. have a screenshot? I tried finding a post that he put up there because he was definitely salty after that uh fresh and fit Candace Owens collab. He put up an emotional post out there that he had to take out. I want to know if anyone has the screenshot of that. Please email me to email it to me, and I'll do another show exposing that because it shows the petty, petty nature of Bro Tomasi. He's he's literally a freaking child, bro, that gets butt hurt all the time and doesn't want anybody else to win. He saw that a collab with Fresh and Fit and Candace Owens, and his tweet was immediately petty. That's why he's talking about taking it down. I, bro, can we? Can anybody look through the archives of Twitter? And find that post because I bet it was petty as all hell. Th this guy doesn't want to see anybody win. Okay, he wants to do a collab with Candace Owens, right? He he wants to. He, right now, you got this Destiny and Candace. He wants to be Destiny right now. Okay, th 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 this is all. This this right here was three hours of just hate streaming. That that, that that's all we got from Rolo, bro. That is crazy. At least be proud of Fresh and Fit. Why aren't you proud of them? Them your boys. Why, why are you getting mad about the collab they did? Just because you don't like Candace? Like, this is a definition. Rolo literally is a definition of cutting off your nose just to spite your face. 
That, that that's he's the definition. Those are your boys. Why are you why are you mad? If if Candace want to pick him up, let Candace pick him up. It's not like fresh and fit are going anywhere mainstream. No one's gonna take him seriously. So Candace is probably gonna be the best bet to grift into politics. Like, what are you doing? Yo, John, shout out to you for the two. John says this nigga Rogan watches his loser ass. This nigga thinks Rogan watches his loser ass facts. But that's the thing with Rolo. He thinks everybody's watching him. He thinks he's more famous than he is. Remember that beef he started with DJ Academics where he tried to call DJ Academics on, on some stupid shit? And DJ Academics was like, yo, you don't run shit anymore, old man. <laughs> you don't run anything anymore, bro. You're washed up. You're a dweeb. But that's what DJ Academics referenced him as. A dweeb, bro. <laughs> a dork. Anyone that refers to himself as a godfather of Red Pill, you're a dork. That's like me saying, hey, all right, I'm I'm the godfather of calling out red pill people, bro. If that that's that just made me cringe even just saying that. <laughs> like, just, just like that's like, ugh, bro, what? That's weird, bro. Like, not, nah. bro. But think about it. I'm the godfather of the red pill. Like, bro, you're lame. You're a fucking lame, dude. That that's that's what it is. And DJ Academics is right. You're a fucking dweeb, bro. Like, only dweebs would do that. <laughs> they would do that, bro. But shout out to you honest with you but then i see the show and it's about what i expected it's it was i was expecting you know i was expecting i was expecting how they would be with candace how they were with michaela peterson and to be honest i kind of felt like it was sort of along those same lines like they Damn. didn't want to be too controversial they could have been like myron's an attack dog when myron comes on access vegas he's there to kick a bitch off the show he wasn't there to kick candace Owens off the show he wasn't Rolo's going crazy right now. I bet you Myron is watching this and punching air. Rolo, I can see why you haven't been invited to the show in a while. All right? If this is how you talk it, I can see why. You know what he just did, chat? He's basically saying, Myron, all right? Hey, listen, we know you go hard when it comes to these OnlyFans girls. Hey, listen, you're an attack dog when it comes to kicking bitches off the show. But uh, when it comes to little old Candace over here, it looks like you're a little bit more timid. Newsflash, Rolo, that's nothing new. That, that's nothing new. We've been know that. Like, we, we saw the interview he did with Brittany Renner, okay? They were talking mad shit when Fresh and Fit were on their show. But the minute DJ Academics put Fresh and Fit in front of Brittany Renner, their tones change. Because, listen, Brittany Renner, say what you want about her, but her status, is it's up here. It's up there, okay? She, she's popular. So she doesn't need Fresh and Fit to get fame like some of these OnlyFans girls do, okay? She doesn't. So she's not going to sit there and let Myron talk crazy to her with her without her snapping back, right? Versus the only fangirls, it's it's not the same, right? So Myron, for the sake of clout and making sure the show runs smoothly, he doesn't become Myron. He becomes a bitch, just like we thought. Just like he did with Kodak Black, when Kodak Black was on the show, okay? Because when you have status... Okay, these red pill guys and their morals, it goes out the window. They will they will gladly bow down to you. All right. And they'll they'll, they'll suck your toes if they have to. All right. That's who they are. They're the clout chasers at the core. So hit them not doing that to Candace Owens. Why are you surprised, Rolo? <laughs> We're not surprised. We've seen Myron not go hard when it comes to people that got more clout than them. So you calling this out, Rolo, ain't nothing new, my boy. But it's what's what's new is the fact that he's doing this live. He's saying the quiet part out loud, live. He's basically saying Myron's got no teeth when it comes to people with clout. And he's not wrong. I'm going to be real, chat. He's not wrong, right? But what I do think, bro, that rift he's creating between Fresh and Fit, because we know how petty Myron is, all right? Listen, that's only going to grow, old man. So just because Myron is texting you back right now, don't mean he's cool with the shit you're saying this same moment right now bro because them sound like fighting words i can give her shit right he wants to he wanted he wants an alliance and i was actually surprised that candace owens did the after hour show i wouldn't think that that would be her forte but she's been on a whatever podcast so i guess it's not too out of the out of the realm of possibility and um it, that show was pretty good up until a point because she had to leave early and i thought it was interesting because like i'm looking at this go damn i'm looking I'm like this is this is a very early show it was like 7, 7.30 when they started that. They usually start the after hour show right, right around 10. And um, I'm like, oh, it must be because she has something else to do. Well, guess what she had to do? This. <laughs> this is what she had to do. Oh, and damn. right as before she was about to leave. Damn. Damn. So Destiny was the main attraction. <laughs> she didn't even give a fuck about 
<laughs> Fresh and Fit show. She said, hey, y'all. The after hour was great, but uh, we got to go do Destiny now. <laughs> Yo, Candace is just, she's just riding that clout chain. Listen, that, that's what we knew, though. We knew she was a glorified clout chaser. This is who Candace Owens is. So I don't know why this is so surprising to everybody. Of course, we'll, she'll be on with Destiny after Fresh and Fit. It, it makes total sense. The after hour show, you know, they were talking about Destiny. And one of the things that Myron said during uh, during his sort of now, I guess, his new estimate of Destiny, I don't know how, when this happened, but he said something effective like Destiny is a professional contrarian. And uh, and which I agree with 100 percent. But uh, but I guess that stuck. Or maybe that was the narrative that was supposed to be out there because Candace uses that term quite a bit in this. And honestly, I think the the exchange between Destiny and Candace Owens was almost a better. I hate to say this. It's almost a better show. Because there's conflict. You want blood. Now he's saying Candace Owens versus Destiny was a better show than his boys, Fresh and Fit. Whoa. That's crazy, bro. Yo, Rolo, Rolo's not holding back here. This is very interesting. He's basically saying the show that Candace is doing with Destiny was better than the show Candace did with Fresh and Fit. Rolo's starting some shit right now, chat. <laughs> I think Rolo's starting some shit right now. There was no blood between Myron and Fresh and Candace Owens. There was definitely blood, definitely blood in this one. And it might have been Destiny. People kept saying, Well, I can't believe you're on Destiny's side. How come you don't like how come you don't like Candace Owens? I'm like, I'm not I don't like quite honestly, I don't like either one of them. <laughs> Bro, shut up. It's cap. Because uh Myron got exposed when Candace Owens was there about being a trick on seeking arrangement. A woman who was on seeking arrangement that was interacting with Myron called him out live. What did Candace Owens do? Blah, 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 blah. Nothing. She didn't even call Myron out, Mrs. Traditional Christian Values, right? But when she got on Destiny, she had all the ammo in the world to say, Hey, Destiny, you're a degenerate. Destiny, your advice is ruining men. Your destiny, your advice is ruining society. She had no problem doing that with Destiny, but when it came to Myron, nothing even though uh this guy literally is contributing to the problem making women more gold diggers and uh, uh what do you call it? feeding into that whole infrastructure right because you're on secret arrangements she didn't call him out so again we're dealing with the same demon whether it's candace or whether it's myron Gaines. they're both the same people neither of them called each other out when it mattered but they will gladly call out somebody else outside of their own circle so Again, it seems like uh, Rolo, you're the only one that doesn't get this yet, but I, I digress. But to listen to people say, well, why are you taking Destiny's side? I'm like, I am not taking, just because I'm criticizing this whole thing doesn't mean I'm taking one side or the other, okay? You can you can do that. You really can, okay? Like, anybody who knows my history with, with Destiny and thinks that I'm taking a side, you need to fucking delete your fucking Twitter right now. <laughs> you need to, like, just leave, out, get out, out of the pool. <laughs> if you think that that's, if you think that I'm aligning myself with that bullshit, right? Especially after what happened last summer. Last summer. So let me be the first one to correct you on, on your assumptions. Okay? And the reason why they do that is because they see Destiny as the, the guy on the far left, and they see Candace as the guy on the far right, and it's whoever they align with. And I'll tell you right now, Destiny is spinning, and his people on DGG Network and his, uh, his Discord and his Reddit and everybody, they're spinning it as if this is the biggest victory he's ever had. And Candace Owens and everybody on the other side are saying, he got owned, he got punched in the ground. And Bro, I, if regardless, I think there were some parts uh, that Destiny could have been better on, but I think for the most part, Destiny smoked the shit out of Candace because it, it was basically, if you guys watched it, it was Candace basically trying to make this moral statement or this moral stance over Destiny. And it just like, it's like, bro, what? And then she, it came down to this part where it was like, they were talking about like, uh, it was a student loans or something like that or a school. And Candace Owens clearly didn't know what the fuck she was talking about, right? Again, it was more, Candace Owens, she's on that grind right now where she's just shaming people who aren't living that conservative lifestyle, right? Mainly black culture, right? She she loves doing that. But, like, she she's doing that in general. And she does that by going online and basically shaming modern women, right? That That's what it is. You go react to a video on modern women and then talk about how bad they are, right? So even though she she's living that lifestyle as a modern woman right now, 
Who cares, right? Yeah, my baby, I, even though I, I'm a married mother, yeah, no, I can stick my baby with my husband and come out here on YouTube and do these grand tours and do all these interviews in Miami, right, while my husband's at home with the kid. But I'm going to sit there and shame all these other single mothers out there or these career-working women. How dare they leave their kids at home and not be traditional wives, right? It's like, bitch, what <laughs> are you? Who the hell are you talking to here? Like, uh, look at you. You're in another man's apartment or a, a house right now all right you're sitting there debating him right next to him you got a whole husband a whole i'm sorry bro but listen from a traditional lens this don't look nor this don't look right to me <laughs> you should be at home with your husband all right so again these people are hypocrites okay it just is what the hell it is yo john with the two shout out to you john says like when he got laughed at by sneako goofy ass listen i'm gonna tell you this right now john uh Rolo Tomasi still can't define what a high value man means. Okay. Just like uh Mr. Uh, uh Sus Marquard over here doesn't know how to create an NFT from the command line or doesn't even know what the fuck that means. Okay. It's the same thing with Rolo. All right. Uh, again, th th this guy doesn't know what a high value man means. I, I think if anybody were to call into their show and ask them one simple question, what's a high value man? A lot of these guys, they can't answer the question, right? Because if they answer the question, then it puts them in a bind because now you, you literally have a point you can go toe to toe and basically debunk because if they say, well, high value man is a super rich and wealthy guy who has his life in order and everything else. And the woman is going to flock through and he can say, okay, well, that's nice. But how about how, why is it that that high value man who's super rich and successful? Why is his wife cheating on him with a pool boy? <laughs> is, does that mean that the pool boys have value? <laughs> like, uh, what? What? <laughs> so, uh, or they they can switch and say, no, 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 no. You have to be the the Chad. All right, it's all about the muscles and the game. As long as you have that, you're high value, right? And you say, okay, cool. So then, what's the point of uh, you know, going out there and grinding so hard to make six figures for what? If women don't care about the six figures, they just care about the muscles and they care about the you know the game, right? Why why do we need to go out there and make money? Why do you guys have to sell courses on us making money you see whatever whatever definition they put out there it's gonna make them look bad <laughs> okay so so you either this guy who has to make money to be high value or you have to be this guy who has to be super in shape to be high value right and then it doesn't make any sense okay again that's why they can't answer that question and they got laughed at it's just crazy uh i don't play games with the five shots he says cap she did destiny first then went to f and f i don't know because uh, if, if wait wait a minute are you saying Rolo's lying about this? Because if you're saying Rolo's lying about the order on which Candace Owens did the show, you do realize he did that on purpose to make Fresh and Fit look bad. Are you sure I don't play games that she did Destiny's first before she went and did Fresh and Fit? Because if that's true, then Roll Tomasi just told a big lie on his show, and we just caught it, right? And this big lie he just told literally just made his buddies, Fresh and Fit, look bad, which adds to my point where I think that Rolo is purposely trying to sabotage the relationship he has with Myron or Fresh and Fit because I don't know why he's throwing these jabs at him. It doesn't make any sense. He's first saying that, you know, the show that Destiny had was way better with the show that Candace had with Fresh and Fit. He's saying that, oh yeah, can't. Uh, uh, Myron didn't ask the the tough questions. He's like a he's like a pit bull with no teeth when it comes to uh, Candace Owens. He's saying these things. To, uh, uh, yo, chat. To me, it seems like he's trying to start something with Myron. Some of y'all saying he did lie about that. Yo, why? So why? What? Why? Why is he hating on Myron? Why is Rolo hating on Candace Owens and Myron? What's going on? Why would he lie about that? Y'all are saying he lied. I don't play games says she talked about the debate on After Hours. Oh, wow. Rolo, you fake as hell. I hope I hope Fresh and Fit are watching this right now because we just exposed the truth. I hope y'all are watching. Hey, hey, Myron, this is your friend right here. He just lied. He's trying to make y'all look horrible. He just lied and said that Candace had a better show, implied saying Destiny was a better show after you guys. That's crazy. He would lie like that. Hey, I appreciate y'all catching that. This is this is interesting. I, I told you this guy's a hater. 
<laughs> I told you this guy's a hater, bro. Like, come on. Like, listen, y'all over here talking about, oh, Duke, come on, man. I mean, another Fresh and Fit video? Come on. No, no, bro. I'm telling you right now, the real haters are the ones in their corners, bro. Look at this nonsense. Rolo out here lying through his teeth about Fresh and Fit just to make him look bad. This is crazy. And it's like, that's the blood sport. That's what they want. Because Destiny is a Ben. He's easily ridiculed. He's like, why we're taking this dumb kid who used to sell, what was he, a carpet cleaner? This carpet cleaner, seriously, at 35 years old. And she makes a point of saying, you know what? You're a man child. You're 35. You've got a kid who's about to be 13. And, you know, like, she, she knows enough about his history to sort of give him shit. This is the show. This is the show that Myron and Fresh should have had. But they didn't. They gave it to fucking Destiny. And I don't know what the logistics were. Maybe they had already planned it out. But Destiny looks like he just rolled out of bed. And if you look at Destiny's, like, like his home apartment podcast studio right there, you know damn well he's sitting in front of his 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 monitor, his his, his computer, whatever else, because that's just how he is. He's a Twitch streamer who doesn't know. Are, are you fucking high? I'm sitting in front of my monitor and computer right now. That don't mean shit. You're probably sitting in front of a monitor and a computer right now. What the fuck is he talking about, dude? Uh, how does that a dig against G Destiny? It seems like y'all have the same setup. <laughs> like, is, is that a laptop in front of you? Huh. Seems like a computer to me. What are you doing, Rolo? Like, this is so pathetic coming from you. The first thing about his own podcast or his own fucking putting out at least a, a well-polished uh, show, certainly not like this, and uh, goddamn not even close to the way that Myron and Fresh do their show. Very professional video, everything. And you know what was the better show? This one right here. Simply because it had that conflict, it had that they had their budding heads. There was the he was destroyed. That that factor that definitely got it right here. If you go and you look at the analytics for this right now, now Myron Fresh oh, took dude is that interview of real, them man. and Candace off of YouTube, and it's on Rumble. You can still go get it on Rumble, and it's doing good numbers on Rumble. Don't get me wrong, but Destiny and Candace within 24 hours, I think he's at 300. Last I looked, it was 305,000 views on this. It will probably hit a million by Tuesday, if then. Because people wanted to see this exchange. And guess who's spinning it as a victory? Destiny's people. Guess who's spinning it as a victory? Candace's people. This is just this back and forth. It's just the same. It's the narrative bullshit that happens in an election cycle. They want a guy who is the, they want the fall guy. They want the Patsy. They want the Ben. And Destiny is a Ben. So she goes in there and she, I don't know. I'm not really sure she got what she was hoping for in this, but I'm going to, I'm going to play a little bit of this and we'll riff on this. I might, I might scrub this up to like the 23 minute mark. 20, let's and say you I'm were a millionaire. I travel the world. I get to research and talk about whatever I, I get, want. I get to yeah. cool people like you and other people. I get, to, I live in Miami in a high rise for five thousand a month. I mean, I, I think my life is pretty okay. I mean, okay. What do you, but no, but I'm saying like, what are you doing when you're trying to sell the people that, you know, being a hoe is cool, smoking pot, saying, I don't necessarily think, you think are you, like, you going to age out of that? What like, I try, what I say oh, no, about this video is. When Candace Owens is putting all this shit about Destiny, it's like, Candace, you gave a okay to Andrew Tate on your show. He's a trafficker and a grapist internationally. And you don't think that's adding to the problem of putting bad role models out there to ruin society? But yeah, you want to talk to him, Destiny, about, hey, how, you're saying that, you know, hoes and, you know, being everything is okay. How dare you say that? But you sat across Andrew Tate and gave him the okay on everything he was saying. You even lied for him. So, again, this is what I'm talking about, bro. The grifting knows no bounds, okay? So, uh, that's why I'm like, yo, th this video was just Candace Owens, pure hypocrisy on display, judges somebody when, meanwhile, she's buddy buddies with a trafficker. A 35 year old man, right? Like, you know, and you're, and, you're, and you're kind of doing the like, I'm a college dorm kid and I'm trying to make everything sound cool. But I just want to point out the fact that you're a 35 year old man mm -hmm. and your words should matter <laughs> and they should they should have weight. Like, you, it, I, like I, I said, agree. if you were 20, I'd yep. be like, I get it. When you're 35, mm -hmm. you know, say things with conviction, say I'd things say that have meaning. Things with conviction, yes. You know, and like when I asked you, what would you recommend to a woman at 25 and 30? I didn't just start rambling about what a 20 year old should do and how biological, blah, 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 blah. I would say exactly what I would tell a woman at 25 or 30. Yeah, I know, but your behavior and, and, and I will appreciate that people that are younger won't understand what I'm saying until you hit 35, which mm -hmm. is, I'm, I'm going to be 35 this year. Okay. You're act both the same age, but she thinks she has the balls to lecture him. What are you talking about? He's a multi-millionaire. He's successful debater. He has a kid he's taking care of. He's living life. He's a guy that streams video games on the internet, but debates the high hell if you want to. All right. I think he's living his life the way he wants to. And you want to live that life on the internet too? Go be it, Candace. You're both 35. You're multi-millionaires debating people on the internet. I don't see any difference between his life and your life. It seems like you're just making a judgment on his appearance. That's what it is, right? Where you can have this air of faux professionalism because we know you're ratchet deep down, okay? 
you can have that fake appearance and that image to fool people to think that you being a 35 year old is not as childish as destiny's 35 year old but at the end of the day i see two of the two sides of the same coin or two different sides of the same coin that's what i see except for destiny's on the left you're on the right you're both the same people <laughs> like uh, that that's what i see right now so why are you sitting there saying oh well you need to mature destiny okay <laughs> i mean take it from me okay you need to mature all right, come on. You're a millionaire. You just did. You need to mature, bro. It's not like you're talking to Sneeko over here. If you were talking to Sneeko, that would make sense, okay? You're talking to Destiny. I think he has a good head on his shoulders, bro. Uh, leave him alone. Get <laughs> this. You're both the same people. Like this is so. It's so weird. They're the same fucking age. Like who? The, if I was Destiny, I'm like, bitch. Who the fuck do you think you are? You think you're my mother? Is that what the fuck you think this is? Like you're gonna sit there and lecture me about my life, bitch? What the fuck? Where are you right now? Where's your fucking kids? Huh? Uh, 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 talk about that huh? but but, but then, then, again that might get too petty I, i'm just saying you're not gonna sit there and talk to me like that if we're the same age the fuck what, what are we doing acting like you're can you believe these two are like the same age they're the same fucking age now i'm not gonna i i can't give destiny a lot of shit about work maturity to me is just like it's it's about the individual at this point i think when I get shit from people talking about, like, they'll say, Rolla, why don't you act your age? You're 55. I'm 55 years old. Thank you very much. I'm 55 years old, right? Why don't you act your age? Well, my, my question to them is, what would that be? How would you like me to? How can I please you? How can I, how can I make you feel more comfortable around me? <laughs> how can I? Uh, what, what, what would you like me to wear? Would you like me to cut my hair? Do you know how long? Just, just take off the beanie, dog. <laughs> that, that's honestly what your fans are waiting for. You over here? He's 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 doing the ponytail thing underneath the beanie, bro. <laughs> just take off the beanie. <laughs> People have been telling me to cut my hair. <laughs> you know, when my dad told, first told me to cut. My hair. <laughs> I think I was like 14. Because it's ridiculous, dog. What is what is this you're doing back here? <laughs> you're not even touching the top of your head, bro. It's all beanie till you get back here. <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> if I didn't cut it for him, I ain't for sure the fuck ain't cut it for you. Um, no, nah, I've been through a lot of different iterations, but I think what's funny <laughs> is when people say like well, they'll give Mike Sartain shit for this too. Like you're 46 and you're dating Kylie. Kylie's 22, right? Um, act your age. O okay. Well, can you tell me what you think a per a man of my age? Tell me how he acts. Can you please tell me what? what how do you think? How, what can I do? How can I change? I don't know, Rolo. Maybe not wear a beanie with a suit. Uh, maybe maybe that could be it. Because this right here on Dr. Phil, of all places, you are an embarrassment to national TV. I'm just saying, dog. Okay, so uh, maybe that there's a start for you. Hey, this right here, this don't scream masculinity. Oh, uh, uh, about the hair dye, too, as well? Where you, you dye in your fucking, your, your, whatever's left of that fucking mullet jet black dog? I mean, what are we doing? Maybe a salt and pepper look to really, you know, be distinguished. That could help maybe all right but again this jet black look where you meanwhile you got a gray fucking stubbles on your on your fucking face like a five o'clock after shadow bro what are we doing all right what are we doing clearly you're, you're you're desperately trying to look young you're not trying to look your age at all and it's fine it's cool whatever all right but just just know it just looks weird bro it, ju it just kind of does all right I'm, I'm just being real with you you're 55 you're 55 all right. If I if I went home and if my grandpa was still alive, all right, and I saw him dressing like this, we'd have a problem. Hell, my dad was my dad was like he was in his sixties when he passed away. All right, so my dad was older than you. Didn't dress like this at all. <laughs> my dad, like, listen, I want to be dressing like my dad when I hit sixty. That's what I want to be dressing like, right? I, my dad definitely wasn't wearing this. He wasn't doing it. He was acting his age. So that, that's what they mean by that, Rolo. You're not acting your age, right? Even Mike Sartain, like, you're dating a twenty-two year old. And you're forty-six. Like, what? Aside from her being young and attractive, what else is there to her, bro? Like, there's no – you can't tell me she's mature enough for a 46-year-old. She's 22, bro, okay? She's 22. You're 46, all right? But these are the same guys when a relationship doesn't work out. Let's blame the female. It's like, 
what, 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 it's, it's not you. You heard what Rolo said. It's not like he's dating her. He's in a relationship with a twenty-two year old. You're you're not even on the same mental wavelength right now. I'm twenty-nine. All right, and I'm not even on the same wavelength mentally as most 22, 22 to twenty-one year olds. All right, it's just one of those things that we don't even talk about the same thing that I want to talk about. It's just uh, basic. All right. So again, having a long-term relationship with somebody at that age, and you're 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 a decade older than I am right now, bro. Uh, clearly, it's just one of those things where these guys are shallow. All right, as they're sitting there shaming women for being shallow because they're picking the the best of the best men, right? These guys want to act like they're not trying to pick the youngest and the most attractive women out there, right? And it's like, bro, okay, so if you're gonna shame the women for doing that, just know that this is what you're doing. It's the same dating strategy, right? So who it just answers the question we try to tell y'all. Both sexes choose the better option for their dating pool. So you shaming women because they're not dating the average guys because they want a, a guy who's above average versus y'all are doing the same thing. Why are y'all complaining? It seems like this red pill shit don't even make any sense, really. But no, it's because y'all want to have your cake and you also want to be able to eat it at the same time. Okay, you want to be able to complain about women, to shame them back to being traditional women, all right, while you can go out there and whore out with as many women as you want. It, it, the world doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. Uh, a great pill with the five. Shout out to you. Great pill says, dear Candace, based on your conservative views, why should we around uh, why we around panel of men alone on a daily wire and then a panel on a panel hop on fresh F and F then destiny akin to a, asking for a friend? I got to read that over. My, I, I I did not read that properly. It says, dear Candace, based on your conservative views, why we around panel of all men alone on the daily wire and then a panel hop on and then then panel hop on fnf then destiny asking for a friend well because she's not a she's not a traditional woman she just she's one of these grifters that Rose is talking about right she's a grifter all right she she's doing the rounds because she wants clout for her show it's an election cycle season 2024 okay she's making the rounds right now that that's what she's doing okay so again that's why I, I I laugh at these conservatives that sit there and think that just because she sit there and demonizes black women and black culture that she's still speaking facts it's like uh yeah she may demonize black culture but she's uh praising a trafficker Okay, so I don't I, I don't know what you conservatives are thinking over here because y'all will sit there and, and look at the sounds of freedom. Is that what it is? The song of freedom or sounds of freedom? Y'all know that conservative movie that came out, right? Y'all be like, oh, see, Q and I was right. I told y'all they're trafficking kids. The Democrats are trafficking children through the border, guys. I told y'all, right? But then, but then when it comes to Andrew Tate, who's an actual trafficker, all right, here's Trainers Owens. Oh my goodness, uh, evidence. No evidence at all. I can't believe the I can't believe the, the matrix is after you like this. This is crazy. Like I can't believe this. It's like, wait, what? Y'all can't do this. <laughs> Y'all cannot do this. Y'all can't on one end say, oh, the left, they're enabling trafficking with young girls from the border. All right. And then here's Candace Owens. Okay. Oh, 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 Andrew Tate. Uh, oh my God. These people, I know they're like a ton of evidence against you, but you're innocent. You're so innocent. Like, why are they coming after you, Andrews? I, I just can't see any evidence against you. Tucker Carlson, the exact same thing. Y'all are hypocrites. All of y'all are hypocrites. So anyone who's still taking Candace Owens seriously after that debacle of an interview with Andrew Tate, I'm sorry, you lost me. You're not a you're not a person who I would consider someone that we should really even care. <laughs> like, like, why care about your thoughts? Because clearly you're not thinking my behavior how can i change my personality to better suit you and would you respect me then if i did that probably not right so i think it's it's kind of disingenuous to hit somebody up and say well you know you're trying to pretend like you're a frat boy at 35 i don't think he's trying to be a frat boy i think he's just like an autistic spurg who got lucky that's what he did and i was going to say is like I, 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 well, destiny's a pretty sharp guy i don't know if he wouldn't have made it on youtube or in the internet or Twitch, or whatever the fuck platform he started with, he'd have probably find some way to make it in life. He's a pretty smart guy, all right? He's probably one of those uh, didex, uh, auto didec people where you can you can teach yourself a lot of things and learn pretty quickly. He's that kind of guy. So even if he didn't luck out with YouTube, he probably still would have been successful. Rolo, you on the other hand, bro, I don't know. Looking at your YouTube numbers right now, it's not looking good for you. <laughs> I, I think the moment your red pill shit's dead, you're gone. I, I don't think you can hack it any other way, bro. 
I- I'm just being real. So keep hating. <laughs> the Great Pill, shout out to you for being a member. Let's go ahead and get a W in the chat and welcome Great Pill to the family. I mean, Great Pill's always been part of the family, but I appreciate the re up. Uh, shout out to Great Pill. Uh, Don with the two. Don says, Trollo heard Jal sent letters to MLD and him. Wait. <laughs> Wait, MLD got a lawsuit papers from uh John Anthony lawsuit? That's crazy, bro. Don again with the five. Don says, even if Trollo is on TRT, he's still an old dude who wants attention. His video on Knowles at the beginning, but then he wants to be taken seriously. No, that you're you're right. He listen, I don't take him seriously. I'm sorry, bro. You, you you can't look at this guy and you can't you can't look at him and take him seriously. The moment I look at Rolo, I think bitch. I don't even care. You can have all the he can eat all the testosterone in the world, bro. He still looks like a bitch. All right. He looks like a bitch in a shirt that's too tight, still wearing a stupid beanie. That's what he looks like to me. Okay. So again, these guys that they're in that, that stage where they, they want to be young again. Okay, they want to feel what it's like to be that warm, hot blooded young guy that used to go out there with all these women except except it's a delusion because even when these guys were younger they weren't getting women like that so this right now for rollo is to relive a glory day that never happened the same thing with fresh and fit the same thing with all these guys this is revenge of the nerds rollo is just getting his revenge now because he's old enough Okay, he, he's too old now. He's getting his he's getting his get backs now. All right. These are guys who wanted to be that dude back then. They weren't that guy, but they have a chance online now. Rolo definitely didn't have muscles when he was younger, but now with TRT, easy game, baby. Easy game. Myron, same thing. Wasn't getting girls before the podcast, but now he got the podcast seeking arrangements all day. He got secret arrangement money now, thanks to the Sims paying him. <laughs> that means I shit you not. All right, he wasn't able to pull these girls when he was in high school or college. You know, y'all want to know what Myron was doing in college? All right, let me show y'all. Let, let me <laughs> let me let me show y'all what Myron was doing in college. This is what Myron was doing in college right here. Hold up. Let me let me show y'all something. This is what Myron was doing in college. <laughs> all right, th- this is all the attention he was getting right here, right, right here, chat. Look, look at this, y'all. Y'all see this? Nothing but nothing but dudes, bro. <laughs> nothing but dudes, bro. All right, don't even don't even let me get to the shirtless photos. Uh, My- Myron had with, with with these dudes laying in bed. All right, so again, now that they have the chance as grown men who scammed a bunch of idiots for their money, they're able to pay to get these women now, okay? This is literally revenge of the nerds. Wasn't that wasn't that in the Bible uh, where they said the meek shall inherit the earth? We are living through those times right now. The meek are inheriting this bullshit, the internet at least, okay? <laughs> Just be real. <laughs> but no, he seems like that guy who's desperately trying to stay, to, to relieve a day that never happened. I think it's it's the height of like ridiculousness when you see Pierce Morgan putting this kid, so this Ben, on a show with Tommy Laren to talk about Palestine and Israel. That's because Destiny, uh, kudos to him. I mean, a short time he spent on a subject really worked himself up to get to the debate status where he's actually able to keep up with debates with some of these top guys who are uh, even pro-Palestinian, right? So, again, I think that's more of a testament to his skill. Rolo, I don't see you doing that. I'm sorry, Rolo. I don't see you doing that, going from red pill to talking politics. You seem like you're stupid, okay? Destiny can go from video games and then debate you on politics, and then debate you on red pill. Matter of fact, didn't he run rough shots all over a lot of you red pillars? And now he's debating Israel-Palestine. Hey, this is a testament to his to his talent. Y'all over here sitting there crying that all these other, uh, even Myron, I'll give him a testament to that, right? Myron over here is trying to get into politics now. They're all trying to get into politics. You over here not trying to grow, hating over there, all right? At least they're, they're trying to build the skills to adapt out of the space. You're not able to do that. You don't have those skills. So, yeah, he can go from debating red pillars to all of a sudden debating Israel-Palestine because that's his skill, all right? The same thing with all these grifters, like Pearl you're talking about, the Ben. Pearl can go with going with the red pill talking points, so much so that should be called the uh, female Andrew Tate at the end of it, and then flip over to politics. And by the way, she's kind of winning in politics right now. 
I told y'all, this, this is what I was telling you guys from the get-go. Now all of a sudden, Roller wants to complain about it. We've been saying this. Ever since she linked up with Candace Owens' management crew, we knew this was going to happen. What this is telling us, Rolo, is everyone can pivot but you. <laughs> so why are you getting mad at Destiny? Uh, he's getting invited to debate Israel and Palestine? Really? Uh, <laughs> really? Really? Pierce Morgan? You're going you're gonna to invite Destiny? What about me? <laughs> I, I, I could do it. I, I'm Rolo. I mean, come on. Hey, bro, Rolo, stop. This is getting this is getting bad. <laughs> this hating is getting bad, dog. Yo, uh, Don with the $2 Super Chat, Don says, Duke, Trollo is going on Temple. Watch out. Oh, my God. Benny Brigade collide, bro. This is going to be crazy. The Benny Brigade is about to collide, dog. This is going to go crazy. We're going to react to that because I want to see what Smarmy Rolo got to say about this. When did he become like an th this guy? No degree, no f nothing other than being a Twitch streamer. Played what uh, StarCraft for God knows how competitively. He's a competitive video game player who happens to be on you know Vivance half the time. God damn man, he's did he ramble on this one? Um, definitely medicated. Um, I, I think it was uh, some of the guys were telling me like they were looking at. <laughs> They were looking at his when this was going live. They were looking at his mouth and they were looking at like what he's like. They're saying, "Man, he's on some good meth, or he's like on some good crank, or, allegedly on some good crank, or something like that." And I go, "It's it's the Vivans and it's the it's the Adderall or whatever it is he's taking these days because that's what guys like this take. They take Adderall. And or, guys like you take TRT to get muscles. Something close to it. Modafinil, right? <laughs> uh, maybe it's Moda. Uh, poor man's Adderall. Um, actually, there's nothing poor about it. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's like, you think I should dye my hair? Is that what I should do? Blue? Okay, and listen to K-pop. Is that what I'm fifty? Thank you. But you know what? Put that in. Put that in the in the chat. What should Rolo do to to so people will know he's a fifty five year old man? <laughs> Please tell me what. Give me your suggestions because I I don't know. Am I supposed to wear like Dockers and like a brown shirt or a white shirt and a, a tie or something? I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Right? Tell me, please. Tell me how how can I better please you? How can I change my look, my behavior, my personality so you'll like me? How about, how about you just stop being a dweeb? How about that? Right? We'll start with this little smirk over here that, that screams, I'm trying to tell you I know what I'm talking about, and I'm being snarky with my comeback. How about we How about we change all of that, okay? Get rid of the beanie. How about you, you, you stop dying at jet black, okay? Because no one believes that you, with these gray stubbles over here, has jet black hair. It just, it's tacky as fuck, bro, okay? At least, at least go gray or something, all right? You can keep the long hair. Who fucking cares, all right? Dye it gray. Gray or go, go silver like a fox or something like that. But you over here, you, like you dye in it gray, like you expect us to believe that you, you, you're black, like, you, like your hair grows out like that. Black, really? Is, is that what you expect us to believe? Okay. Uh, I mean, Rolo, this is getting pathetic, bro. Like if you were my granddad and I had to walk outside with you, I'd be embarrassed. I, I'm just saying, dog. <laughs> like, what was what, what, now? We're going to hop in your Ford Focus? Is that what this is? Come on, dog. So I'll have more integrity. <laughs> Can you please? Suspenders. There we go. Okay. I'm getting suspenders. I see suspenders in there. She has no degree either. Does she? Because she says, she says in this, in this interview that she has a degree in journalism or she went to, to school for journalism. She was, she Candace didn't get a degree. I don't remember. Candace didn't graduate with a degree at all. She left university after that uh, uh, scandal she had where she tried to literally create a doc, a doxing website for bullies, right? Where she can, if, you, if you're getting bullied, you can put their info in there and you can dox them online. And she got a huge pushback from it. Oh, oh oddly enough, that was her uh, come to Jesus moment and then she became a conservative. Believe it or not, right? Because she got pushback from liberals who didn't agree with her creating a website to dox bullies. She decided that was her reasoning to become a conservative, and she's been grifting conservative ever since. How many of y'all actually believe this woman is a conservative? I don't. She's she's a liberal woman through and through. She's living her life like a liberal woman right now, and her little liberal conversion to conservative story, it don't make sense. Okay? It seems like she knew this was a play from a long time ago, and she's been playing you suckers ever since. Okay? But no, she didn't graduate with nothing. Okay? So I don't know why y'all are sitting there giving her all these accolades that don't belong to her. She's very vocal about it. 
a college dorm kid. Yeah, and your catty insults towards people online make you seem like a high school mean girl. Okay. I mean, like, what do you mean? Like, we all have our, our things. But you're like... selling to them things that you know aren't good. So, <laughs> what do you think? I, I'm so if you, if you, you were a 25 year old, like, when I'm on the whatever podcast and I'm yeah. surrounded by women that are in their 20s mm -hmm. and they're saying, like, you know, the whole life is good, the reason why I said to that girl that I'm going to pray for you is because I know that she's going to have a different perspective when she's older. So, I, I, why, wait, whoa, whoa. Why didn't you tell Andrew Tate that when you sat across from him? Candace, and I, I wish Destiny would have brought this up. Why, why didn't you do you, 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 oh, so you're going to tell these OnlyFans girls, oh, I feel sorry for you, but you can tell a convicted, even Rolo knows he's a convicted, he's about to be a convicted trafficker, but you can, you can tell Andrew Tate, hey, I feel sorry for you and those 12 year old boys that you're fooling out there. You can say that to Andrew Tate Pearl or not Pearl, a uh, uh, Candace, but you want to sit there. Oh, when I was on a whatever podcast and these girls were talking, I told them how, 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 how crazy they were being. I, I told them I feel sorry for him. Bitch. Get that shit out of here. We don't care. You're compromised as they come. As I recall, that was the same thing she said about Stephen Crowder. We're gonna pray for you. That's a, that's what that's what that's what evangelical Christians say when they don't know what else to say. That's okay. I'm right, so I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you to understand it, so you'll agree with me. Oh, you won't dress like a 55 year old man. I'll pray for you. It says uh, Owens pursued uh, pursued her undergraduate degree in journalism at uh -huh. the University of Rhode Island. Then she dropped out her junior year because of an issue because of her student loan. Oh, so she never really completed it then. Yeah, it doesn't say that she completed it. She studied it. journalism. She didn't actually, she doesn't have a yeah, diploma. I don't know why you guys didn't know that. <laughs> We've been know that. I, 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 bro, she, she's not a graduate of anything. So even her as a 35-year-old college dropout, okay, who ended up being a millionaire, now turns around and lectures Destiny, who's another 35-year-old college dropout, who's also a millionaire, about how to be a, an adult. I just find it comical. <laughs> like, it's like, yo, Candace, wake up and look in the mirror. You're not you're not that different. You're both the same. Yeah, I guess it does. Wow. Wow. Rolo Tomasi has two fucking degrees. You guys got shit. Rolo Tomasi, you have two degrees and you're still on YouTube. And you know what sucks, Rolo? You know what sucks? It makes us all worse. You're losing. You're losing to guys who are college dropouts, okay? And they're beating you right now, okay? So I think that's it. I don't know what's worse, huh? You got two degrees, but you're getting beat out by dropouts online. Huh, what are you doing with both your degrees to end up in the same space to compete with college dropouts? Uh, I'm sorry, bro, but if I had two different degrees and just to end up competing with college dropouts, um, I'm, I'm probably not, I'm probably not in the right space or I'm probably not using my degree well, or probably didn't spend, uh, student loans money. Well, okay. I, I don't know. Right. But in this case, when he went to school, student loans were probably dirt cheap. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we just, he's probably one I paid my way through school generation ass. All right. Listen, it ain't the same no more. All right. Most student loans are the price of mortgages nowadays. And I'm the, I'm, I'm the, I'm the Ben, I'm the idiot here. Okay. <sighs> Never have I been more glad to have gone to UNR. Never. Um, she did this interview before FNF. Are you sure about that? Because she left in the middle of uh, of he's the... getting called out on his own show, and he's doubling down, bro. He's he's definitely trying to make Fresh and Fit look bad. He's like, Are you sure about that? No, she 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 definitely did. Uh, she did Destiny after after Fresh and Fit. Okay. She, that's why she had to leave at the after hour shows early because she was going to go do Destiny show. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, that's right. Bro, you're getting called out right now for lying on your buddies. Of the, uh, the, uh, the after hour show. I'm pretty sure she left to go to go talk to Destiny. Or maybe it was in between. Was it before? Was it before? I don't think she did this before. I'm pretty sure she didn't. Can somebody come? That's why old people shouldn't shouldn't be in a young man's game. <laughs> this is the, this is the reason why. Hey, buddy, you're too old. You got problems with your memory, son. <laughs> you're, you're, you're going too far, Rolo. Okay, come on. Confirm that for me, because I don't think she did. Uh, Candace Owens is the church lady of SNL. Yeah. Well, the reason why the okay, so the reason why I think she did leave to go to do the show was simply because that Myron and her were talking about him being a contrarian. And that's pretty much all she accused him of during this during this exchange. Did she or did she not? I don't think she did. FNF is the nighttime show. Yeah, I know that. But it was like seven. I guess it would have been night, wouldn't have. Yeah. This is clearly during the day. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Yeah, well, man. either way, this right here was the show that Martin Fresh should have done. They don't prep. Bro, and you notice instead of just admitting and just, you know, 
being honest with the narrative. No, he's doubling down. Well, still, still, even if even if she did do the show before, this is the show Myron and him should have done. Bro, like you're just a hater. You're you're a hater, dog. Press her. At least Destiny pressed her. I'm not upset by that. I don't feel like that needs to be a Okay, so it was though. Okay, I'll give it to you. 30 minutes before. You're right. Okay. talking about all these topics. We're My bad. dealing with a 35-year-old man, okay? And you, you think, think I'm and, and, and you know better, okay? Wait, what do you think I I'm saying? Well, what I said, what I, what I said when you were defending the lifestyle of being a hoe, why are you doing that? I don't think I defend the lifestyle of being you a hoe. You did. You did a whole video basically saying that none of my points of me trying to tell these women that they essentially, you can do something better. You don't have to sell your body. This was your like snazzy video. Come back to it. Why are you making a comeback? Yes, you can make a video and be like, why can't someone do heroin? But why would you as a 35 year old man want to sell something to someone or make it seem okay or cool or relevant when you know it's harmful to them? I don't get that because it's, of your- It's funny because she's a 35 year old woman did the same thing with Andrew Tate. And yet if she wants to let your destiny about this. And destiny didn't even, he, he's not even, he didn't even say what she's accusing him of saying. So this is crazy to me. So, I, guess, like, kind of I don't tell people things. that they have to, particular thing but if i see somebody that's, do. that's doing heroin i'm not gonna be like you know it is whatever and it's just like whatever you're just you think that heroin, heroin is comparable to I'm, recreational I, sex I, I, your I best friend andrew tate's a trafficker and you're 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 saying that's okay i hate this chat i actually hate these people <laughs> you know i god damn it man can't God damn Candace Owens, like for making me actually agree with Destiny. <laughs> you're, you're the only one who would actually put me to the point where I would agree with Destiny. Now, why am I saying Destiny's a Ben, a, a Ben in all of this? Because she has basically taken all of the shit that Matt Walsh, uh, Ben Shapiro, uh, Michael Knowles, all the rest of these guys would like to say, those red pill guys think that premarital sex is fine. They think shooting heroin is fine. Let's let's go throw out the most random, you know, most extreme bullshit I can possibly come up with. And she's basically making Destiny sound like he's the red pill. Like he's the problem. Destiny has fucking fought me tooth and nail for the longest fucking time. He was just on with, uh, it was just on, um, what's his name? Uh, it was on with Mike Sartain on Alex from Playing With Fire and de debating, like actually a halfway decent debate uh, over evolutionary psychology. Trust me, he's not that guy, Candace. But Candace wants to make him that guy because she can't make Myron Fresh those guys because they have to have some sort of alliance. They have to have some sort of like, we got to come come to Jesus moment kind of thing. They don't talk about the, they didn't press her on any red pill. So you don't want Candace Owens to align with Myron and Fresh? Is, is that what you're saying? <laughs> Hold up. You don't, you don't, you don't like the fact that they're collabing? I, listen, I'm with you, Rolo. I, I don't like the fact that they're collabing either, but the fact that you don't like it is very interesting because uh, you're supposed to be on Team Myron. So this is very, very uh, alarming to us. Topics. They didn't press her on anything really. They did a little bit about uh, Stephen Crowder, but that's only because they knew goddamn well that the people in the chat would be, why don't they talk about Crowder? Right? That would have been it. What I would have asked is, did you know Hillary Crowder before the divorce? Were you besties with her? Did you know about the video, that the infamous video from last year? Did you know that? Did you have, were you blackmailing uh, Stephen Crowder? Why didn't you ask him those questions? Because that was on everybody's lips right around, right around this time. Like, it was April, April or May of last year when they were, when, um, when the, uh, the, the divorce thing, the divorce, the infamous, uh, was it the ring video that came out? The clearly doctored ring video. And yes, it was, it wasn't just the breaks between the two of them. She, did she know about that? Those are some uh, no, Stephen Crowder was definitely a, a monster. I, I don't give a fuck what anybody said. Based off that video alone, that dude looks like he, he made a big deal, okay, about walking a dog. She was pregnant, dog. Like, she's pregnant, and she could have gotten sick picking up dog shit. So uh, Stephen Crowder still wanted her to walk the dog. It's like, bro, you're a man. What's wrong with your legs? Take the dog out or something, all right? Like, well, why she, a pregnant woman, have to walk the dog? And on top of that, he didn't even want her to use the car. So even in that little snippet video we watched, Stephen Crowder looked like an asshole. Far from the traditional Christian bullshit, he tries to push on everybody else, right? So, again, Rolo agreeing that Stephen Crowder was some kind of saint and Candace Owens was protecting him. I guess they could consider that snakeish, but, again, I, I, I think what Stephen Crowder did was, was pretty trash. Simple questions. You don't, have, you don't have to even press her on those. Just ask the questions. Asking the question would have been enough. No, it doesn't come up. Didn't come up with with uh, with uh, Michaela Peterson either. Why? Because they probably wanted to get Jordan Peterson on, which is a pipe dream. Nobody gets Jordan on, especially not if you can't pay for Jordan. Jordan is pay to play. Um, I love Gad Saad. Gad Saad is pay, pay to play and probably worth every penny. Don't get me wrong. You know, these guys got to turn a buck. But uh, if you're going to play nice to people who really don't like right now, I will guarantee you I could probably go dig up half a dozen different videos of of Michaela Peterson talking shit about those red pill guys when she actually means me or my inner fresh or did you debate Michaela Peterson and did you lose to Michaela Peterson? 
Am I wrong, chat? Didn't Rolo Tomasi and Michaela Peterson have a debate? Let me look this up. I think they did. And Rolo Tomasi was super soft. Hold up. I'm pretty sure they debated, bro. Maybe not. Maybe I. Maybe they didn't. I don't think they did. I don't know. Hold up. Hold up. I'm pretty sure they did, bro. Hold up. Let me see if I can find it. Or maybe they didn't. Maybe I'm thinking Tommy. Um, no. What's her, what's the other girl's name? Maybe I'm thinking about the other woman. Tommy Lauren or Lauren Southern. Lauren Southern, yeah. No, wait a minute. No. No. Yep, they did. Yeah, they did. It's on her channel. They, it was two years ago. So he did. He did. I think he did debate her. Yeah, he did debate her. He did. Here it is right here. It can be. Does that just. And he didn't ask any of those questions right now. Nothing. So uh, you, you, you were right here with Michaela Peterson. There she is right here. Why don't you ask her the uh, the questions that you 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 you're uh, going after fresh and fit for, huh? Well, is it could it be that you didn't want to be hard on her because you wanted to collab with uh with uh Jordan Peterson himself, huh? I mean, let's just be real here. Glenn shot to you for the ten dollars super chat. Glenn says, as a former producer who used to work with Rolo in Vegas, oh you don't work with them no more. What happened? Says and is the same producer Pearl hired to help her last week in Nashville. I got plenty to talk about when it comes to Rolo and his BS. So now you admit that Rolo's on some BS. I told you. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yes, we, we know. We, but yeah, shout out to you. We, we, hey, when I do a call-in show, because hey, listen, best believe we're not done with Rolo yet. All right, but when I do a call-in show, uh, we'll uh, we'll go over this because it's very interesting. Uh, I want I want to hear your insights to that. All right, but shout out to you. But yeah, he did do a collab with Michaela Peterson. Why didn't you ask all those tough questions then? You look like you got bodied by her. Okay, your your demeanor changed when she popped on the show. This, this guy is crazy. Down with the two shots. He says, Glenn, you stopped working with Ro Trollo. Yeah, I, I was surprised, too, because last time you was on the show, you, you were working with Rolo, I believe. Right. The whole Access Vegas uh, shit. So what happened? I, I'm curious to know. Brian or whoever else. Probably Pearl. But she she hates, hates the red pill with a fucking passion. You can sit there and fucking play jerk each other off. No, no, no. Thank you. And I'm, you know, it, it, it basically comes back down to principle, but let, let's let him finish. I am, here. quite frankly, I actually think a woman, as the one that I sat across from when you were critiquing this video, who says that she slept with up to, what was it, 20 men per night? Yeah, it's just as bad. And I know that that has to be hurting her soul. So I look at her as a human being. Hurting her and, soul? Yeah. Well, she just has a different lifestyle. She than doesn't. Completely. She no, does, she does, you know. No, she, ha what do you mean? You know, she's, she's telling you, she was very honest, actually. And that's why I appreciate her because she was very honest that for her, it is just about money. Okay. But when I see that individual, when a young woman is saying that she'll sleep and see up to 10 to 20 clients per night, that's a broken individual. And it's just as, and when, it just as when you see why? somebody who says that, you know, they're. That's bullshit, bro. Listen, all my, all my, listen, I, I ain't going to tell them myself here, but spending time around women. One thing I realized is women love sex way, probably way more than most men do. I, I'm, I'm just going to be real with you, bro. Women love sex. So just because we're living in a time where we're a lot more free to explore ourselves don't mean shit. Like not, well, I mean, it does mean a lot because um, now women are, are, you're seeing that expressed in various types of ways. I think a lot of men are shocked at just how like sexually active a lot of women could be right in comparison to themselves. So, yeah, I'm not surprised. There are women out there who can get dicked down by 25 dicks right now and still be fine. <laughs> They'll still walk around. I don't know. But, uh, women love sex. That just is what it is, bro. So to sit there and say, oh, just because she's getting dicked down by 25 dicks, her life must be miserable. And she's getting paid for it? Oh, my God. This woman. I feel so sorry for her. Meanwhile, to her, she's like, yeah, woo, making all this money from these idiots. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't, she's still going to get wiped up. <laughs> I, I don't, what is there to feel sorry for? Think about it, Candace Owens. A woman can go whore herself out on OnlyFans or on Pornhub, all right, and still get marriage proposals. Meanwhile, you over here, out here trying to shame them, 
for what? <laughs> they living their life. There's still a man that, that's going to be at the end of the tunnel waiting for her. And it's been proven. Any man still pro – listen, I'm going to tell you this. This talking point of women are going to die alone and buy a dog, that's dead. That's a dead talking point because it's been disproven over and over again, especially these women who are supposed to be post-wall, these women who are supposed to be overly promiscuous, promiscuous or with too many body counts. These sort of the type of women are seeing, we're seeing right now get marriage proposals from men. The men who are supposed to be in the red pill awareness group. Okay. So it seems like they are winning. Okay. The women are seeking arrangements. Guess who's dating all of them? The red pill boys. Okay. So again, you guys sit there. I feel so sorry for you. You're not going to find a traditional man because you're showing your bodies online and you, you have your you have a high body count. No. Sounds like y'all are hating because they could have all these high body counts and still get the same marriage proposals as you, Candace. Isn't that weird? <laughs> isn't that weird but yet you are sitting in front of andrew tate and you're not going to call him out for being a trafficker i'm done with this chat i'm done with this i can't do this anymore the hypocrisy is killing me chat i can't do this anymore okay shout out to you guys I i'm sorry i can't endure this I, I i can't do this because this is just too much uh that's why i didn't want to react to that destiny and a candace owens video because that would have just pissed me off so much like it's like really candace you're gonna sit there and, and, and be hypocritical are you serious it would just boil my blood i couldn't handle it <laughs> i thought about it believe me i thought about it. you you can even see i can't even handle it right now all right because I, I no matter how much candace wants to open her fucking mouth okay i'm still gonna remind her that andrew tate and that interview she did with him still exist okay and the fact that she a follow-up video shaming the rape victim of Andrew Tate. It's just, it's so telling. But now you want to sit there and judge Destiny about it being morally just bankrupt when it comes to women and sex workers? Fuck out of here, bro. Your buddy Andrew Tate pimps out OnlyFan girls that get dicked down by 25 plus dicks a day. So you sitting there not saying anything about him or anything about moron Myron over here who uses seeking arrangements that validates a lot of women who live these promiscuous lifestyle and validates even further by dating them, okay, you're not going to call Myron out? You're, you're a fucking loser, Candace. I'm sorry. And I don't want to listen to anything you have to say about morality. It's it just over my head. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, okay? Yo, John with the two shout out to you. John says, MLD would not be pleased. Justin, dear, I can't do it, bro. We might, might have to be another Rolo video. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't endure this. <laughs> I can't endure this. Not, not with the Candace, not with any of that. It's just too, it's just too annoying, bro. <laughs> like, I don't understand. This shit is killing me. <laughs> This shit is killing me, bro. I am losing brain cells every single day I react to these bozos. <laughs> okay, I am burning inside, bro. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> these guys are fucking annoying, girl. Like, I, I would rather crawl through two miles of broken glass, okay, with my balls out, all right, than listen to five more minutes of roll, Tomasi. I'm just being honest with you. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. But shout out to y'all for being here, for enduring as much as you can with me, all right? I don't know how y'all do it. If I'm losing brain cells, I could only imagine what y'all do is right now. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I'm sorry, but uh, I, I, I thank you so much for enduring with this oh jd informer with the two shout out to you says uh f equals destiny the village idiot and his f destiny and the village idiot and his supporters <laughs> listen i think destiny is pretty cool right I, I think it's pretty cool i think he's a sharp guy right i don't agree with a lot of things that he says but i do think a lot of stuff when he was running rough shots with these pill poppers i'm sorry bro but he was on point he made he made roll tomasi look like an idiot OK, him and Sneeko made Rolo look stupid. And the fact that Rolo couldn't even answer a simple question of what a high value man meant. I'm sorry, bro, but it solidified everything I needed to know. It just solidified all of it. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with a lot of stuff he says, especially when it comes to the role Tomasi and all these guys. Right. It just makes total sense to me. Um, but, yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate y'all being here, chat. I appreciate y'all. Shout out to you. Let me let me ask you this for the ones and twos. OK, let me ask you this. OK. After watching this video right now, do you a believe that Rolo is is definitely hating on Myron, right? Honestly, chat, what do you think? Because I'm starting to see that, right? I'm starting to see that maybe there's a rift right now growing between Fresh and Fit and Roll Tomasi because of this Candace Owens collab. Let me know if y'all are seeing the same thing. Put it one if you think, yeah, Duke, I'm kind of seeing where you're coming from because it seems like throughout this live stream, Roll Tomasi was throwing massive jabs of fresh and fit, even to the point where he was almost willing to double down on the order of the show that Candace Owens showed up on, whether it was their show or not their show, right? Even when he did finally learn the truth, he, did, he even doubled down saying that Destiny versus uh, uh, Candace Owens was way better 
than Fresh and Fit on Candace Owens, all right? So it seemed like he was throwing shade. Put a one. Or if you think Duke, come on. This is more Hayden energy from you, Duke. All right? I, I couldn't expect any less from you, Duke, okay? Obviously, Roll Tomasi isn't rifting with Fresh and Fit, okay? All right? You're wrong, okay, Duke? They're best friends, and their bond is stronger than ever. Put a two in the chat, okay? I don't know. Whatever floats your boat, all right? To me, it seems like Rolo's super pissed off, all right? Because he's, he's been talking about a tweet he deleted after he saw, uh, he saw the show with Candace Owens and Fresh and Fit. So, clearly, he was very upset about that. To me, I think... Yeah, he's trying to cause a rift between him and Fresh and Fit. But if you think maybe not, this is more like a two and Duke is just hating. Put a put a two. I appreciate y'all being here either way. All right. Shout out to you. It means a lot to me. And I'm gonna catch you guys on the next one. Peace.